Are we starting with the National League? Yes. <laughs> we're, we're starting off real hot bats. I love this. Go. Uh, good evening, baseball fans. This is Wednesday. Wednesday. Normally we record on a, on a Sunday, so I'm, I'm not I'm not ready. We're, this is Wednesday, March 20th. I'm all discombobulated because of all of the things that we've just now witnessed on Twitter for the last, I don't know, like two hours. So anyway, I'm Susie. That is Kelsey. This is Bourbon and Baseball. I should warn you, this is a rated R this is going to be a rated R show. So if you got like little ones or if you yourself are not a fan of cuss words, then you should just probably not be here because this, we definitely have alcohol this episode. No bourbon though, but you know, that's okay. What? <laughs> Turn the label, Kels. Um, so can is pretty. We've decided. And by we, I mean, I have just made a uh, general decision um, that we are going to turn tonight into a drinking game. And basically, when and if, if and when, if and when the other person disagrees with whatever you're saying, you just take a drink. Like, you don't even have to say anything. You just take a drink. Um, but I will say, though, that I'll probably just drink randomly. So I may have I to actually say, like, no, I disagree with you. So, uh Maybe it has to be like an extra long drink. I don't know. We didn't really think think about this very long. I just thought that it would be fun. Um, as the night progresses, because the takes will get more awesome. More awesome. For, for sure. We're gonna go with. Yeah. For sure. And maybe that so, goes for comments in the chat too. So if you're listening yes. and you you have a hot take, you have an opinion, uh, we'll drink for your your takes that we don't agree with as well, if we have to. Oh, yes. Definitely. If you guys are here, there's 11 of you here, apparently. I I can't tell on Twitter. Uh, so if you're there on Twitter, if you're out there, say hi, drop an emoji. I don't know. Uh, but if you're here on YouTube, drop a comment, drop an emoji, say hello, make sure that we know that you're here. Um, and do you want to do you want to start with the news that I like you texted me and I'm all I'm sorry, what I literally was trying to cook dinner for my for my child. And I burnt it on the stove. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> reading the reading the news about Shohei. Yeah. So initially, I guess this was like late afternoon. There was a breaking report from uh, Los Angeles news sources. I think it was the LA Times, which the is LA you know, Times. pretty yeah. Yeah. Like reputable really legitimate source yeah. saying that Shohei Otani's attorneys are accusing his interpreter of quote massive theft tied to alleged gambling and so this of course is ipe that we all like know and love and where mm -hmm. i was like oh my gosh there he is in the dugout watching the game this morning in korea and now he has been fired by the dodgers and all these other things are coming out of like um, when i told my husband about it he was like okay who but how did like he steal money from Shohei. And so now am I maybe hearing that it wasn't exactly that he stole money? Like maybe Shohei like transferred him the money to try to help pay off his gambling debts. Didn't, so the second, third, fourth report that I read, apparently Shohei transferred $4.5 million in a couple of different transactions okay. into or for the bookie. Like he didn't show oh, he did not trust eBay to enough him. to oh, shit. give eBay four point five million dollars. Yeah. So he paid the bookie directly. directly. Oh shit. And there lies a problem. I'm all I so my whole thing about this is I really think that Shohei maybe didn't realize that paying off an illegal bookie would be frowned upon slash really illegal slash really against the rules of MLB yeah. and you know is such a good friend that like he's gonna pay for eBay and take care of eBay and then get him the help that he needs. At least that's what I'm that's what I really want to believe. <laughs> like I really want to believe this. Yeah. And then now after eBay made these statements to like ESPN I think it got back and they were like, oh shit, Shohei's going to get fined or Shohei's going to get suspended or Shohei's yeah. going to get in trouble for this somehow. 
I don't actually know like what's going to happen to Shohei. I don't, or if, if at all. Um, but then right. it got walked back. Ipe was like, oh, JK, uh, I stole it all. Like, what? Like, mm. Ipe is just like hacking into shit. I mean, he might just be so, saying like, that because he knows. Not- yeah, he, he might have realized it's the only way to protect Shohei. So, oh, so, yikes. So now Ipe's going to have to like take the fall. Him. Yeah. For Shohei, and then Shohei's just gonna have to put money into like his commissary account in prison, and like make sure that he gets protection in prison. <laughs> like, what? I need a thirty for thirty about this. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna need Diane Sawyer on it stat. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, I mean, we'll keep you updated. Here we've got an update from Kay in the chat. ESPN said Shohei paid from his personal computer with Ipe standing behind him. Oh God, it still doesn't make it like, okay. Ah, uh, and I guess all I'm thinking is like poor innocent Shohei because that's like our our view of him, right? Right. Oh, jeez. How did we go from we don't know shit about Shohei to all of a sudden Shohei has a dog, and then all of a sudden Shohei is married, and now Shohei is wrapped up in a gambling scandal? How did we go from that to this? This is what happens when you sign with the Dodgers. He asked for this. (laughs) The level of media scrutiny and attention and investment in him is tenfold. I was just like, there was that bomb threat too that was associated with him in at the Korea series. I'm like, can you imagine being this man right now? Like his his wife is being introduced to the world for the first time, and people are obsessing over that, like on like Taylor Swift levels and the bomb threat, and now the, the gambling scandal. And, you know, you're just trying to play and perform after signing the largest contract in sports history. So no big deal. Yeah. You know, it's maybe the maybe the New Balance um, deal will take care of all of it. Like, I don't I don't even know. Is my I thought it was on? interesting. What, oh, yeah, I think it is now. OK, <laughs> I think it was interesting what you said to me uh, when we were texting about this, that like, why didn't he bring it up to someone within the organization that that probably would have known how to handle it just to make sure that it never got to even this point? Well, like, I I mean, we there's somebody on the payroll that has some ridiculous title and you're all, what do you do for the team? And it's the fixer. It's the Mm -hmm. fixer for the team. Like we, you know that everybody, that there's gotta be one. All the teams got one. So why did, why did Shohei not be, excuse me, yeah. sir, uh, this is what, this is what needs to go on. What, what's going, I, I don't, I have, it, the math is not mathing. Right. And, you know, and with the kind and it's of not money, mathing because I'm Asian, so there's actually something wrong. With the kind of wrong. money that Shohei Otani is managing, I can't imagine that any sum let alone millions of dollars gets moved without multiple people being aware of it on some level. So that's just another piece of it that is strange. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. So, chat, what do you, what do you guys think? I, do you have thoughts on this? Kay? Yeah, is this you know, like, Shohei Astro? in trouble? Or, or is is Ipe the fall guy? Or does Shohei have a gambling problem? Like, I really, I, if Shohei has a gambling problem, like. I, I don't know what will happen. The, the sports world will implode no. in, in on itself. That would be worse than me finding out at 12 years old that Santa Claus isn't real. So I don't think I can handle that. You found out when you were 12 that Santa wasn't real? <laughs> I Actually, I think I was 11. I was in sixth grade. <laughs> that's 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 a better story than I have. I it learned was that Santa brutal. wasn't real when I was six. Uh, so, and then I had to like pretend from then on. For all the other little kids, because mm-hmm. like I literally caught my mom presents in hand, tiptoeing, and then she's like, "You're dreaming. Go back to sleep." I'm all, <laughs> "This isn't real." Yeah, it's just like Shohei sending money. <laughs> <laughs> See that it would be that kind of like heart wrenching for us baseball fans, though. So yeah, I really hope Shohei's hands are clean, and. I don't know that it's just some drama that will be out of the way before 
the regular season gets really in full swing because, oh, these are not the kind of headlines that we want to be talking about around our need, sport right now. I need to – what is going to happen overnight? That's that's what I need to know. And then, like, the MLB MLBPA is, like, going to explode. So yeah. the, it's not even opening day, y'all. Like, and we got all, all of the drama. All of the drama is – does eBay get like thrown out of the the team hotel? Oh shit. Yeah, because they're in <laughs> Korea. Uh like does yeah, he need to I mean, find his own way home? I would assume I just what I do know, even in like I was working somewhere when someone came in and fired someone else that was working there, and they were like fired for like essentially stealing from the company. And when that happened, it was like once they told them they were fired, like someone had to escort them around like the premises to like collect their things and like, you right. know, make, make well, sure they left. So, so I would assume someone is like overseeing. Yeah. Until he's fully disconnected from I'm sure it's a whole process. In one of the articles, it did say that he that Ipe like stood up in the clubhouse in Korea and told everybody that he has a massive gambling problem. And that there was going to be a story that was going to come out. Oh, my gosh. So, <laughs> Astro Wharf Craig says the Yakuza is calling. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <sighs> oh, God. Okay. So, I I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll keep you guys apprised when we know stuff. Obviously, you know, if you don't live under a rock and you are also on Twitter, you can follow along, too. Um, but yeah, it's, let us know if there's any like breaking a, updates as we yeah get into it here. Yeah. So, um, so we've talked about the four point five million dollar elephant in the room, Kels. Why don't we go over uh, the teams and we'll start with the National League? Yeah. So we're gonna go through all thirty teams tonight. We will give you their FanGraphs projected record. And we're going to give you an overview of the moves they made in the off season. And then just talk a little bit about kind of our thoughts or predictions for this team in, in 2024, before we really get going here. So let's start with the NL East. We've got the Braves predicted to finish in first place with a 97 and 65 record. The Atlanta Braves did plenty this off season, even though they maybe didn't need to, they signed potential starter or swingman Ronaldo Lopez. They added Joe. Is it Joe Jimenez? And, Jimenez, yeah. and Aaron bummer to their bullpen. And they traded for a potential high end starter. Maybe once again, Chris sale and outfielder Jared clinic. So yeah, I mean, they definitely got better, even though they were one of the best teams in baseball last season and, and have been for a while. Susie, is there anything that stands out to you that will differentiate the Braves this season from last? Well, I mean, they signed they signed Aaron, Aaron, they signed Adam Duvall as well. And I really wonder if that was because Jared Kelnick is not doing what he thought, what they thought he could do. I was really hoping that, you know, the change of scenery was going to help him and not feel all of the pressure because he's the tiniest tiny of cogs in that massive lineup. Yeah. So he wouldn't feel the pressure. But now I wonder if he's putting like more pressure on himself because he's like, I don't have to do anything. But now he's really not doing anything. I don't know. But I think that Adam Duvall signing was insurance. So definitely. Yeah, they're going to. They're going to win a lot of games. I need to know if Acuna steals 75. Does he does he hit does he hit 50 75? Does he hit 50 homers? 45. No. Homers? Oh man. I mean he hit that 41. is definitely that's going to be uh, of course one of the most exciting things I think again this season because I do think he will have another phenomenal year. Will it live up to last year or even potentially beat it in some instances will be very fun and interesting and okay it's jared kelnick kelnick i really want to say like kelnick. kelenic because that's what it looks like but then that's no, like no. kelonic which is yeah, not what we want to be talking about kelnick jared kelnick, kelnick i totally agree with you he has for whatever reason not reached really major league potential uh whether it was with the mariners and now 
in spring training. Not been great, even though we're trying not to overanalyze that. So that will be an interesting piece for them. And then, of course, to see how Chris Sale fits into that rotation and whether he's an every fifth day kind of guy can only make a really good starting staff even better. So, yeah, Braves are going to be fantastic again this year. We'll see how far I have a, we can get into the postseason. I have a very important question, though, for you about the Braves. Yeah. Feels. How tight does Spencer Strider's pants mm. get this season? You know, it really depends on if he can alter them the same way that he's been able to before. I heard they're not as, you know, they're, they're not as customized. Yeah, it's not right. as customizable. Exactly. But they're so also to... thinner. So... Yeah. Are we are we going to have another like Padres player situation on the like I really hope not, but those quads in like the regular baseball pants were yes, impressive. So I just Spencer Strider and his medium baseball pants will it'll be an interesting watch. I just what, I'm like, what's the over under on on that? Yeah. So biggest biggest things to look for are, I would say, how Renato Lopez and Chris Sale respectively fit into the rotation, <laughs> and will Spencer Strider split his pants, or how many times? What's the over under <laughs> there? There you go. Blesses in the chat. Let's move on to the Phillies here because I found this kind of interesting. The Phillies are predicted for an 85 and 77 record which is so much worse than the Braves. And maybe this is because Fangraphs just anticipates the Braves being that highly competitive. But I, I, I think the Phillies might win a few more games than 85 personally this year. They locked up co-aces Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola in the offseason. They also signed super utility man Whit Merrifield, who seems like a great fit for their roster. But I mean, they're just jam-packed with superstars and guys who are high on vibes. What's your but take it's the same on team, 85 though, right? Wins? It's the it same is, team that they had last season, right? It is, but they had a really slow start last season. An uncharacteristic play from Trey Turner. I mean, just Trey Turner having a different start to his season, first whole half of his season right. alone, could you know, earn them a few more wins for sure. Well, maybe if the Philly fans, you know, clapped for Trey Turner to begin with, like it would not have been such a big deal. I'm just saying that's Philly fans. I, that's on you. I'm going to go to a Phillies game for the first time in, in a week or so. And I am very interested what the vibe is going to be like, because part of me thinks like I'm going to be obsessed and I'm going to fit right in with the Phillies fans. And part of me is terrified. <laughs> I, the, but that's, I, I'm still confused on how, what was their record last, last season? Um, that's a great question. I think it was about there. Was it the same? Um, but, but, but I got it right. We're very professional here. People here. That's why, that's why we have the alcohol. Oh no. They won 90 games. They won 90 games last season. Come on. You really think they're not going to win as many games as they did last season? I don't know. I don't know. And then what well, is they got too? like, Ooh, maybe. Yes. I mean, I, I don't think, think he's, I don't think he's like hurt, hurt. But yeah, I wanted to say that there was. I would say. But yes, there is. He's having some back troubles, which he kind of struggled with all last season. Even so, I am i don't know. I'm not going to say they got like better because when you pay players, you already have more money. You don't get better. But they're just as good and probably more settled in and familiar with specific roles. And everybody, I would think, is just vibing even more. The Phillies time is coming. Yeah. That's That's what I feel in my heart. Okay, well, you know, the vibes, we're big vibes people here, yeah. right? Like, yeah. what do you mean, think? Ranger Suarez, you think Ranger Suarez is, is a sneaky good three? Like, I hate to admit that, but he is. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and he Taiwan it. Walk, I would think that this would be flipped, though. They have Taiwan Walker as their fourth starter and Christopher Sanchez as their fifth starter. And maybe it's just recency bias because Christopher Sanchez, like, I just saw Christopher Sanchez carve up my lineup. Uh, but I feel like Christopher Sanchez is a better pitcher than Taiwan Walker right now. Mm. But again, maybe that's just recency bias. Again, I, I don't watch a ton of Phillies. I had um, a drink on baseball, that. Baseball, you know. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. First thing you've said that I, I could maybe disagree with a little bit, but time will tell. 162 100. games will tell. Mostly, I want to hear from the chat if you're listening, whether you're live or not. Do you think the Braves are going to win? that many more games than the Phillies 12 more games 
than the Phillies. I don't know. They did last season. They won 14 more games than the Phillies last season. But I would be interested to see if that gap is a little bit closer this season. There is another pretty substantial gap between the three and four spots here for predictions in the NL East, as you might anticipate. The Marlins and the Mets are both predicted to have an 80 and 82, so under 500 season. Let's start with the Marlins. They signed shortstop Tim Anderson out of free agency. Alas, they signed a free agent. Uh, Josh Bell, first baseman, big power hitter, did pick up his player option, so he is sticking with them. But Jorge Soler did not, so they lost that power bat in the lineup, which was one of their only real power bats in the lineup. And as you heard us talk about on this past weekend's episode, they also have some major injuries in their stellar but young starting rotation. So Braxton Garrett, Yuri Perez, and Edward Cabrera are all currently injured with pretty unclear timelines on their return to health and to the field. Is this going to be the downfall of any potential that the Marlins had to be competitive for a playoff spot? I th- I think so because you were, they were really, really, really hoping that that like all of those young arms were going to either stay the same as they did last season or, you know, hopefully take a step forward. Yeah. And the fact that Jesus Lazardo, now don't get me wrong. Jesus Lazardo is a very good pitcher, but the fact that like Jesus Lazardo has to be like the opening day starter. Yeah. You're all, I, wait, what happened there? Um, so the, Roster Fangraphs roster resource has Jesus Lazardo, AJ Puck, Trevor Rogers, Ryan Weathers, and Brian Hoeing as their rotation. AJ Puck literally carved the Astros up three days ago, two days ago. I didn't have that on my baseball bingo card. No, I'm all. I'm sorry, AJ Puck. Where did you come from? Oh, I know the A's. But regardless, <laughs> how how you didn't like see it coming? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't see it coming. I did not have that on my bingo card and the fact that he got moved from the bullpen to the starting rotation you're all oh okay so i don't know but that that bullpen in and of itself though is kind of is kind of ridiculous and dirty i want to say but like in a good way you know what i'm talking about people yeah yeah um but tanner scott as their closer you're all who's tanner scott it's just another arm that the marlins are going to bring up that is just going to just throw like dirty change-ups and sliders and you're all oh cool so yeah, you'll, you'll know who he is by the end of the season especially if they win as many one run games as they did last season and that's kind of where i'm on the fence i think there's a chance that things align well enough for them i love josh bell i love jake berger i think he's somebody who's like really just getting in his stride in the major leagues and i hope that he becomes more and more of a household name in baseball um, and, you know, he can make a big difference in their lineup. Obviously, Luis Arise is a guy that anybody think, would kill to have in their lineup. Go for it. Do you think Luis Arise gets uh, the batting title? Again? Do you think he, do you think he hits, Ooh. maintains? Because he didn't, he didn't get it. That's, I mean, what did he get le- this last season? Because he didn't win it, right? He did, yeah. Did he win it? Oh, okay. Yeah, the whole thing was actually to see if he would ever get to um, 400, 400, which he did not. But I mean, that would just be right. Oh, you know, he just he ended with a paltry 317. Like that's. But, you know, yeah, so I think he absolutely will be in. I guess my prediction there is he'll be in the top three for batting average again, for sure. I think he's that kind of consistent. And it's, it's just, I don't know. The Marlins are so interesting to me because they have some, some pieces that you could build a team around, but the pieces that are weak are so weak that right. it can't, really just can't, the, the, the stars the, and the strong ones can't necessarily make up for it. But I love Skip Schumacher. I love their coaching staff and I would love to see them sneak into another wild card spot, but they might have to have that one run win luck again <laughs> say that three times fast I was gonna say, i'm gonna be you lucky like if i get this out once <laughs> but okay, let's so, talk about oh sorry go for it well I, I mean it's gonna lead into the mets because you basically yeah. you said that the mets and the marlins are gonna end with the same exact record yeah and at no point in time can you convince me that that's gonna that that's gonna happen like just as steve the, cohen drew it up the marlins <laughs> and the mets <laughs> yes jo- I mean, the fact that you, I mean, you got, you got Pete Alonso over there. You got Francisco Lindor over there. Like 
you you cannot convince me that that lineup of the Mets plus Edwin Diaz coming back is not going to affect the record. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the thing is the the starting rotation, right? But after losing Verlander and Scherzer at the deadline last season, which was a huge storyline in 2023 baseball land, the almost $400 million Mets are building a different kind of starting rotation this year. They've got Jose, Jose Quintana is back and healthy, but he's on you know the wrong side of 30. Not a huge strikeout guy. And they've added free agent starters Luis Severino looking for a bounce back, as well as Sean Manea, who... I'm sorry, we need to talk about for a second how super freaking hot, like jaw-droppingly, embarrassingly gorgeous that Sean Manea is since he cut his hair. Have you seen him? I'm not somebody who like sees a guy and is like, whoa, like that's just not, I'm not a super like superficial <laughs> type of person. It's not the first thing I notice about people, but I saw him and I was like, excuse me, sir. Uh, well, uh. You know, a good haircut will do one. Where have you been me. under all of that hair? Yeah, it was it was shocking. But, but yeah. the real question is how much smaller did his hat size go down? Because he didn't have like four really pounds question. of hair to, to deal with. That's Sean, if you'd like to come um, on the show, we have the hard handing questions here for you. Yeah. As Aaron, you mentioned, they also uh, have blue shirts. Ooh. Hold on. Aaron Blue Shirts Banter says 85 wins for his Mets. I honestly I I believe it, Aaron, because as weird as it might sound, I do think the Mets will be at least at the very least, which I guess this would be 80, 80 wins. Maybe I, I can't, I can remember what they're, they finished at. They finished close around here last season, but uh, I think they'll be better than they were last year, which is crazy because last year was like the year that they were kind of in the Dodgers conversation of like, we spent all this money, we loaded up in every way and we're going to make it happen. But Sometimes when you have to be scrappy and more strategic, that's when things come together. And I kind of think they might have a better shot at at least having more wins this year than last year. What do you think? Okay. Taking a drink, taking a big swig. I don't know. The Mets make me drink. Just <laughs> by by and large, the Mets. It definitely make me makes me drink that uh, they added Harrison Bader as a glove for a center fielder. My. Precious Harrison Bader. But as you mentioned, they have stars like Francisco Lindor, Brandon Nimmo, Pete Alonso in the middle of their lineup. And their superstar closer, Edwin Diaz, is back, which was a huge blow for them last season. And not in a good way, people. Not in a good way. Not the good way. I, goal. yeah, no. I think, I don't know. I think, I mean, you know that we're big on vibes over here. So I think that the boost that Edwin Diaz gives just him in and of itself and hearing those trumpets yeah. i think that's gonna get the boys fired up and they're gonna be like fuck it we ride let's go yeah i'm looking at the projected payrolls for this season and the new york mets and the miami marlins set to finish by fan graphs predicted to finish in the same place there is almost 200 million dollars difference between their payrolls so Stab i'm sure if, if if you'd like to stab the uh met fans that are in the chat just a little bit deeper and like twist the knife, um, read how much money is not going to players on their team. Right. That too. I mean, that's the part that really hurts, right? Oof. Well, we'd be remiss not to mention the Washington Nationals, which are also in this league, but they are projected to win 66 games, uh, 66 and 96 record, which sadly sounds about right. This offseason, you may have missed it, but they signed outfielder or maybe DH Joey Gallo to a one-year deal with mutual option for 2025. They also hired former Major League pitcher Sean Doolittle as a pitching strategist. And the thing that I want to keep my eye on this season for the Nationals is they do have a pretty exciting young shortstop, CJ Abrams, with some other guys in the mix there as well. Uh, but Abrams is expected to have a, a breakout kind of year. Is there anything about the Nationals that you are excited to watch for this season? I know you've you've named literally the only like two players I know on the, on the Nets like from from memory. When I it's like if I looked if I pulled up their roster, I'm like, oh yeah, no, I I recognize some of these names. Like Lane Thomas, I think is going to be sneaky good for him. Um, yeah, but really and truly, you're all that's I think that's all I know. And now I I'm so sorry. I couldn't mention Lane Thomas because Cardinals fans are still so fucking salty about <laughs> Lane Thomas oh. having any level of success. Uh, Wait, they why? also did 
because he was traded away. I can't even remember. This is how uh, hmm. people are going to be so mad that I don't remember. Like, oh, because it was not a, it was not a good trade. But the point is. It didn't work out well for the Cardinals, and he's just another one of kind of the trail of outfielders that has left and had more success elsewhere. Uh, that you know, okay. Richie Palacios is going to be Tyler O'Neill. Like, just you know, keep it coming. We've got a whole whole slew of players that I'm sure we'll see that continue to happen with. But that happens with every team, and I don't know other fan bases. If if you feel like your your fan base is like this, but the Cardinals in particular like have a really hard time letting go of trades that didn't like work out really, really well. Like, come on, they traded for Nolan Arenado and the Rockies are paying so much of his salary. And it was just, I mean, a ridiculous deal that never, ever happens. And obviously we're happy about that, but literally every other trade that's ever happened, we will never live down. And I'm just like, let's, we can be happy for these guys to have success elsewhere. And one other player, former Cardinal that I really hope we see have some success with the Nationals is Juan Yepes, who was up and down from AAA to the bigs the last couple seasons. He has a great potential as a, a, a power right-handed hitter, but he's not super valuable anywhere in particular on the field. And I don't know. I mean, he may find himself a home somewhere in that Nationals lineup these days. Uh, we'll see if he, he makes the roster. But how do you feel about their manager, Dave Martinez? All I really remember about Dave Martinez from last season was that he got really, really mad and like almost fought Dusty Baker. I don't mm -hmm. even remember about what, but I don't, that's all I re really remember about him. I just think he gives me like good vibes. I really like him. And I think it's weird to me that they are clearly like invested in him. They keep extending him and are not invested in anything else, but obviously he's a lot cheaper of an investment than other things these days. But I do think that they are holding on to him until they have a better handle on what they have in their, their farm system and what kind of excitement they have coming up till they really start to rebuild. But that is uh, where they're at right now. They are, have yet to really start <laughs> the, the rebuild or they're kind of in no man's land. So yeah, sorry, Nationals yeah, fans. I, I know you're out there somewhere. I have no, I have no really thoughts on this. And I going through um, their Fangraphs roster resource, it jogged my memory that Victor Robles, their center fielder, um, robbed Jeremy Pena of a like straightaway center field home run mm. in the last spring training game. Now, I, I I need you guys to know that Jeremy Pena has not hit a home run since July 5th of last season. Okay, so. The fact that like Victor Robles stole it, like legitimately stole it, like out of the out of the fence line, Those just it just all. <laughs> made me very sad. Made me very sad. Um, Astro Wharf Craig says they all can't be Ernie Brolia for Lou Brock. This exactly. is before that's... this is hashtag before baseball Susie. So I have no idea who these people are. Well, that's it. you don't know who Lou Brock is. No, no. Is he is he up there with Andrelton Simmons? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know who Stan Musial is? Yes, I know who Stan Musial is. Okay, Lou Brock is is in up there in the the Stan up there, okay. level of conversation. Okay. So anyway, that was that's a perfect trade compare. That's exactly what I'm talking about. They can't all be those kinds of trades, and every team has the same success and lack of success in the long run. Since we're talking about the Cardinals already, let's hit up the NL Central. The Cardinals are predicted by the skin of their teeth to win the NL Central with an 83, a whopping 83 wins, 83 and 79. So you'll see the uh, the top two teams in the NL East are predicted to win more games than that. But yeah, here we are in the Central Division. So the Cardinals, if you missed it, they signed top of the rotation pitcher Sonny Gray as a free agent, along with veteran innings eaters Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson to solidify a truly ancient starting rotation. They did add some swing and miss to their bullpen with free agent reliever Keenan Middleton. Unfortunately, he has a forearm strain, and we all know that means a month or two or more, so that's a bummer. But they did make that move, and they do have a lot of promising young talent at the plate in the likes of Jordan Walker and Nolan Gorman and defensively with Mason Wynn at shortstop. They prioritized adding veteran leadership vibes with Matt Carpenter and Brandon Crawford to keep the average age of the team uh, well into the 30s. And 
yeah, all in all, I do think the defense and the depth behind their pitch to contact rotation should be improved from last season, especially if we can get some guys healthy and rely on more consistency there. So that's where I'm kind of trying to turn my my attitude about the starting rotation into a more positive one. That's my my positive take. Listen, do Kelsey, we've been talking about this the entire season, the entire season, Kelsey, that that rotation is just built of Ben Gay and vibes. OK, Ben Gay and vibes. Really? That's all that's all that's happening this season. Ben Gay and vibes, people. It's funny because uh, I would normally think like I look at 83 wins and I'm like, what a joke. Of course, the national media is undervaluing the Cardinals again. And but I look at 83 wins and I'm like. You know what? If this is if this is what happens and they win the division with 83 wins, like I won't be mad because it's so much freaking better than than 71 wins. Like, uh, oh man, the thing that I don't necessarily, I don't, I don't think the Cubs are going to be the closest. Listen, I do think this division will be the closest by far. So. Just before we run through the rest of these here, the Cardinals they have at the top of the division winning 83 games. The Pirates they have at the bottom winning 77. So that's not much of a gap. And the top three here, they have 83, 82, and 80 wins. So that's oh. down to the last week of the season between three teams, sort of a, a you know, competition right. here. And I guess I could see it that way. I don't know that the Cubs are going to be that team – that is up there like super close though. And I thought they would be. So the Cubs predicted to be 82 and 80. They lost Marcus Stroman. He opted out and of course went and signed with the Yankees. We'll talk about that later. They did add Shota Imanaga to the starting rotation who definitely has some promise coming over from the Japanese league. They signed Hector Neris to beef up their bullpen and they traded for prospect Michael Bush as a promising first baseman of the future. They of course re-signed Cody Bellinger, which reminder does not make them better they're just paying him more and the chances right. of him having a season even as good as he did last season i mean that'd be awesome for cubs fans and for cody bellinger but we'll see and perhaps it is that craig council managerial signing that will get more out of an otherwise very similar from last year team what do you think are the cubs better than they were last year i don't i don't think so I don't think so I don't, either. I don't think and so I thought they would be. I was ready to be threatened. They do have that killer infield defense in middle infield defense anyway with Dansby Swanson and Nico Horner, which I'm very uncomfortable. Yeah. Cubs having good defense. I I but do not love Christopher it. I hate Morella to get it. Third. Right. Right. Third base has always been a problem for them. I mean, first base is not is not a super solid thing either they so. have they have cody bellinger projected to be their first baseman so oh. they have oh. cody bellinger as their first yeah. base and then mike talkman as their center fielder okay and i could see that yeah at least starting that way i'm not sure how close michael bush is to like if we'll see him even this season or if it really just depends on how things play out they with have guys they have michael bush slated to be the dh Huh. Well, so we'll that's see. the one that they got from the Dodgers, right? Yeah. Is mm -hmm. that that's who it came over? Okay. So I, I yeah, I don't I don't I would, think they got better. Yeah, and I would think we would see this is kind of irrelevant, but I would think we would see Cody Bellinger DH more and see Michael Bush more at first base. But that's just my personal take. I am I love Craig Council. I my heart was shattered. I was shocked beyond belief, maybe as much as I am to hear that Shohei Otani potentially has a gambling problem. When Craig Council signed with the Cubs, I just I love him so much and I want to root for him so hard. And obviously the Cubs are the number one team as a Cardinals fan that I just cannot root for. So I want him to be the difference. I want to play into this narrative that leadership and having like a, the right manager matters. I want to see managers as a whole get recognized, appreciated and paid more, but I don't know that they gave him the pieces to really take that club to the next level. So it might not be happening this year is all I'm really saying. The other thing or that's maybe, not happening. Oh, go. Maybe that's, maybe that's the whole point. Maybe they're like, all right, Craig council, let's, let's see what you can really can do. Here's, 
Here's some yeah. mid pieces. Go go forth and do things. He has done that over and over again with the Brewers, but I saw a post from MLB today on Twitter that was like, are the Brewers going to repeat as NL Central champs? And I'm like, come on, MLB. Come on. <laughs> LOL. The Brewers also predicted to be 80 and 82 right there with the Marlins and the Mets finishing third in the Central Division if Fangraphs is correct. As you may recall, they lost their ace, Corbin Burns, when they traded him away to the Orioles. Uh, we've got... They lost Woodruff, who is hurt, and then Adrian Hauser, who they traded to the Mets. And yeah, they their dominant starting pitching was no doubt what got them to the postseason last year. And they simply won't have anywhere near that level of starting pitching to rely on in 24. So they've got Freddie Peralta, Wade Miley, Jacob Junis, Colin Ray, and DL Hall expected to round out a very different looking rotation. There is some excitement around prospects like Sal Freelich and Jackson Churio, along with the signing of free agent Reese Hoskins to look forward to for the Brewers fans this season. And their longtime bench coach, Pat Murphy, has been promoted to manager. He seems like a badass with such a fun personality. So I am looking forward to seeing him have the chance to lead the team this year. But do I think the Brewers are going to play 80 win ball at best? That's kind of where I'm at with it. Mm, yeah, I I mean, Deal Hall is is a, a little badass from the Baltimore Orioles. Um, I don't know what I don't know how comfortable the Brewer fans are with Colin Ray as your as your number two pitcher. Is that right. are y'all okay with that? I I feel like as a not even a casual Brewer fan, like I'm all at no point in time do I want. Colin Ray as my number two. As like my number five. Sure. Yes, absolutely. But as my number two? Yeah. I, did I, I think, I think one of the most shocking things about the central division to me overall is that I never would have thought that in the turnover of one season that the Cardinals would have a better starting rotation than the Brewers. But I think they just might. I mean, that I shouldn't say that too yeah. loud, but <laughs> On paper, Jacob Junis and and Colin Ray are t are are just they're they're calling our our number right now and they're like mm -mm, absolutely not ladies yeah. like challenge accepted <laughs> yeah okay so you know if Jacob Junis and Colin Ray hear this for some reason that they can come for us that's that's fine um, it's not that we don't believe in you it's just it's a lot of we things don't have you. to go way too <laughs> too right. We've got another team close behind, though, still sticking in this highly competitive yet less than thrilling Central Division. The Reds projected to win 79 games, 79-83. If you forgot, they added Condelario for infield depth, but, like, did they need infield depth? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> now, now they kind of do because, like, legitimately everyone and their dog is fucking hurt now. Like, Really? I so many it. people are hurt. Oh, geez. So many people are hurt for the Reds now. Um, I want to yeah. say like Matt McClain just went in for an MRI with his shoulder. Uh, um, Ty Friedel. Oh, yeah. Just CJ got hit by that. a pitch. Yeah. DJ Friedel. Thank you. Um, uh, one of their shortstop just had to go down for like labrum surgery. Why am I blanking on that name? I literally just saw it. Um, and Candelario might be the answer. Maybe that's bigger than I than I thought it was when it happened a few weeks ago or so. But it's not to be forgot that they also signed starter Frankie Montas, along with veteran pitchers Emilio Pagan and Nick Martinez. So ultimately, it, really what they did was like raise the floor for their young, talented roster. And the real question now is, is the timing right for the Reds to start to raise in the ranks with their young superstar talent like pitcher Hunter Green and infielder Ellie De La Cruz? Because these are guys that are gaining national attention even on a team that is not winning. Things are going to start to click for the Reds, and that is what I am most concerned about for the Central Division, that like the Reds are going to catch up and make way sooner than predicted. So if I had to predict right now, I would say the Reds are winning or are, are a close second place for the central division. Uh, see, so, and I would have thought, I would have thought that the Reds would be over like with the moves that they made. And then that yeah. young core, but now that the young core is like being hurt all the time, I don't, I don't even know. 
They yeah. have Mike Ford as their DH. That's <laughs> that makes me despondent. Uh, they're Fat boy. Team. Oh yeah, this is a really good point. Yes, uh, that Devin, Devin Williams, Williams down, was going down. Yeah, loss for for the Brewers, and they are a team that you know with a lackluster offense could potentially play in a lot of close games, and that closer could be the difference maker. So that's, they have Abner Uribe, and all apparently all closers are the same. More or less. Relievers are a dime a dozen. That's what I was told on Twitter. So, you know, I read it on Twitter, guys. It must be true. But, yeah, I think the Reds are maybe one of the most underestimated teams in baseball this year. And I said that last season, too, because everyone was predicting that they were going to have another 100 loss season or whatever. And, like, I think I said they were going to win at least 75 games, and they did. And yeah, I just, I think they're also a team that is in a good position to make moves as needed at before the break and or before the deadline. And that's something that's easy to take for granted. But when you look at standings that are pr predicted to be this close, that could absolutely be the difference maker. The pirates are close enough, but not as close projected for 77 and 85 record. They did add DH and left-handed bat Rowdy to He's a fun guy to have on any team. Looking forward to seeing him with the Pirates, along with a ragtag group of pitchers uh, in Martin Perez, Marco Gonzalez, and everybody's favorite, Araldis Chapman. Uh, they signed their starter, Mitch Keller, to an exciting extension, and they have a young rising star shortstop that I don't want you to forget about. If you forgot about O'Neill Cruz because he only played in nine games last season, he is back, he is healthy, and he's going to be so fun to watch play, especially alongside Andrew McCutcheon, who is one of the most beloved players in all of baseball right now. Tom, what's up? <laughs> Yay, baseball! Yay, Hooray. baseball! Tom joined us. Uh, um, okay, so now just in time, just in time, because I'm I'm about to pose a question. I love it. Which cruise, it. which shortstop cruise is going to have a better season? Which Ooh. for the Pirates or for the Reds? Ellie De La just, Cruz or or um O'Neill. O'Neill Cruz, thank you. I was like, I I, I just saw five percent of alcohol is a lot stronger than I had assumed. <laughs> I just saw O'Neill Cruz go nuts, and before he got hurt, he was going nuts. Yeah. So give me O'Neill Cruz, because as much as I thought Ellie, and I, I still think Ellie's great, I think he kind of slowed down a little bit. He kind of tapered off. Where O'Neill Cruz is a freak of nature, in my opinion. I agree. And I agree. Well, do, do you do we think that the Pirates are going to have a better record than the Reds? No, I think the Reds have a better team. Yeah. Oh, wow. But I think okay. I, I think if you just give me one for one, I think O'Neill is going to be the better. I, I would take that bet. I, I would okay. bet for better numbers from O'Neill. I agree. I think okay. he's more ready to be more competitive at the major league level. And also, Tom, I'm so mad that I didn't wear my Dairy Daddy shirt now. Let's go. <laughs> I what totally forgot about that. Dang it. We talked about this. I know. You, you didn't remind us. Oh, man. Um, okay, we well, also talked about all of us people. being here at 8 o'clock, Tom. So, yeah, Tom. you know, you win some, you lose some. Okay? We're so, all I'm even, then. We're all even. <laughs> Danville Dairy oh. Daddies, baby. Get milked. <laughs> <laughs> we all have the same Dairy Daddy shirt. So, yeah, we have to wear them on an episode together soon. Well, Tom, Very just soon. to catch you up, we've gone through the NL East. We have gone through the NL Central. And now we're getting to the NL West with a team that everybody is talking about for one reason or another. The Dodgers are, of course, predicted to win the NL West. But not maybe as many wins as I guess we would have thought. Not as many wins as the Braves is what fan graphs predicts. 93 and 69 is their projected record. If you need me to remind you all of the things that the Dodgers did in the offseason to no longer be the Dodgers of yore, they added Otani's bat. They added Teoscar Hernandez in the outfield. Jason Hayward is back after a bounce back year in 2023. They got a couple of young prospects from the Cubs in that Michael Bush trade. And Oh, the pitching. Yeah, they added Yoshinobu Yamamoto, who is quite likely has every opportunity and reality to be a, not just a number one, Susie, but an ace, I would say. Uh, and, you know, Tyler okay. Glass now to their rotation. They brought back Joe Kelly and they added James Paxton's ar arm as well. And we all know, we all see those three MVPs at the top of their lineup. 
They've got young Gavin Lux and his bat, even though he has struggled to return to form defensively at shortstop. So, you know, Mookie Betts, totally fine. Just like seasoned veteran, going to move to shortstop in the like ultimate team player move because kind of puts him out of his element. Certainly not ideal for him, but he can do it all. And it it looked good in the first game of the season today. So Lux is going to play second. It is, quote, permanent for now. And then they also brought back utility man Kike Hernandez for, you know, bench depth and all the vibes. What do we think? Immaculate dance moves. Yes. Immaculate dance. 162 and 0, baby. 162 and 0. Okay. That's that's what the Dodgers is doing. I'm drinking. Uh, Perfect. We got done and Tom. done. If, if you disagree with something that someone says, you have to take a drink. So I'm drinking because I do not think the Dodgers are going to go 162 and 0. Um, I mean, if, if, if everybody did not realize that that was sarcasm and that is what I'm known for, then, you know, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, can I, you can were I trying read to get you? us to drink. <laughs> That's true. I mean, it's, it's fun and we haven't done it in quite some time and it's my, we might as well, but can I just read you the list of pitchers that are on the IL right now? Yes. For please. the Dodgers. Let's Walker Bueller, Tony Gonsolin, Clayton mm. Kershaw, Not Tony Dustin Gonsolin. May, Emmett Sheehan, Bruce Starr, Gretarol, Blake Trinan. Like, they have an entire, like, rotation and a half just chilling on the aisle. <laughs> Damn, you're um, right. I, Bruce Starr, Gretarol, and Blake Trinan are on the 15-day IL. Bruce Starr for shoulder inflammation. Blake Trinan for a bruised lung. People in the chat, I need to know what exactly is a bruised lung. How does one get a bruised lung? Tom, I had texted this in the group and Tom said that it was like very, uh, a big injury in football. I'm all that's it's we're, we're in baseball people. Like what's sure. happening. So did, did get like a comebacker hit Blake Trinan at some point in time, like in the chat, like how do you get a bruised lung? I understand a bruised rib, but how do you get a bruised lung? Like the ribs, if I'm correct in my anatomy, which, you know, it's been a long time. Don't, the, don't the, like the ribs kind of protect the lungs or am I, I think there's my, to... am I wrong? Yeah. But if rib hits lung, bruise rib or blues, bruise lung. If the, if the rib hits the lung, are we not puncturing the lung? Like what's happening? Yeah. I, I don't know. I should have asked my brother about this. He's a respiratory therapist. I'm sure he knows. I'll, I'll ask oh. him if I get a response while we're on. I'll, I'll okay. let you know. He definitely will know. People in the chat. Do I have any Dodgers fans? Do I have anybody in the chat that like knows what the fuck I'm talking about right now? Because I, I need help. I need help. Guess I was going to Google and then I I saw something shiny and it Squirrel. left my brain. <laughs> and so, yeah. But the fact that they have a literal rotation and a half is on the IL is just ridiculous. Gavin Stone won the fifth fifth starter. He just looks stupid, dumb, good. And that makes me mad. I think the thing that I am on the watch for from the Dodgers pitching specifically this season is the number of innings that they get from individual guys. And maybe to your point, that will matter less because they have so much depth, especially, you know, potentially in the second half of the season. But yeah, I I don't know. I guess... I like to think they're just not going to be as completely dominant as we think. But the other thing that I am excited to watch uh, with Otani specifically is I think we're going to see him show off his speed a little bit more that he's, uh, you know, not got being on the mound to focus on. And I think that that could be really fun. How many bags do you think he steals this this season? How many did he steal last season? Like, I don't I don't know if that's did, even comparable to 30. Wasn't he a 30 30 guy? I don't think so. Let's see if I can. We're find. again. The real question is, is, is are the Dodgers going to run? I don't know yeah. with that lineup that they're going to turn around and go, oh, well, let's put everybody in motion. I imagine they're probably going to be more traditional and just let them hit each other around the bags. Mm-hmm. Um, if Otani wants to run, he could still over 30, no problem. If they're more reserved to going, Hey, we've got a really good hitter at the plate. Let's not send him. Then yeah. he probably then it'll probably be around 20, like you said. Can we take a moment to not like Mookie Betts? I just don't want to like him. And the reason is he's absolutely friggin' good at everything. He should not be allowed to be good at everything. Like 
he bowls a 300 game. Yeah. He can dunk a basketball. He can he can catch passes in football. And well, now I, he can play I, well, every and now he can play every position on the diamond. I I don't know. Is it Mookie there. Betts like 58? Doesn't matter. Mookie Betts is 58. He can dunk a basketball. I, I need he video. He can dunk need- a basketball. It's stupid how talented Mookie Betts is. It's not fair. And I just don't want to like him for that reason. I think I, I agree like, with you. He's like a nice guy too. Yeah. Uh, he's, another he's reason I don't want to like how, him. Like, how dare you seem also like you have a good personality? Be a villain. Oh, Mookie <laughs> Betts. <laughs> Clip this. Yeah. yeah um, no, I, here's why. Here's why I do want to say, Tom, and this might make you feel a little bit better, is that I have heard the national media talking recently about how, you know, Mookie Betts might be the second major league baseball player ever to win a gold glove in both the outfield and the infield during his career. And what I say to that is, have you heard of Tommy Edmond? Susie, I know you have. He very well, more realistically, I believe, could be the second player in all of major league baseball to win a gold glove. He has one one at second base, and I believe he could very realistically win one in center field if he gets healthy. That is my truth. I'll drink. I mean, if the Astros had their way, Mauricio Dubon would be right up there with 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 that competition. Really? Okay. So of all the people, <laughs> I gotta drink again. The last person uh, in this chat that I thought would bring up Mauricio Dubon, noted center fielder. Would be Susie. <laughs> Listen, I'm Day still, Star. I'm still, okay. When we get to the fucking, I'm going to, when we talk about the Astros, I'm still going to be fucking salty about how I'm well going to need another beer. Like, right? that's what's going to happen when Listen, we get there. This, I've, I'm okay. already done with my, my punch. I need another, so that I need we can another. get beer. to the Astros, we got to get through this NL West and we're done talking about the Dodgers. Let's move on. Diamondbacks, baby. Snakes, Let, revenge. Snakes alive. Is on. Snakes Let's alive. go. The Diamondbacks are projected to have an 83 and 79 season, which is just one different than what they had last season. I believe they were 84 and 78. That NLCS pennant winning year. Here's the thing. They got better. They got to the World Series and then they weren't like, you know, we're going to step back. We're going to run it back. We're going to save our money and, and just count our dollars and enjoy it. No, they went out and they signed Eduardo or I'm sorry, Eugenio Suarez. At third base, they signed Eduardo Rodriguez to fill out their starting rotation. They signed Jock Peterson, huge upgrade, power bat for their lineup. So with Jock Peterson and Eugenio Suarez, that lineup is so much deeper than it was in the world freaking series where they were highly competitive last year. They, of course, retained Lourdes Gariel Jr. along with many young, exciting players that I truly believe we have only started to see the best from. And I say that it is snakes revenge season because the national media is still trashing and ragging on this team like they did not deserve to be in the playoffs let alone the world series last season and i'm just so tired of that narrative to be fair though like literally nobody expected the d-backs to do anything last season and so you guys were on them before anybody thank you cheers i think so too because we know ball known Known ball knowers. They taught me to the known baby ball backs, So I got, I got to, I got to give y'all the flowers there because I was over there going, "What are they talking about?" And then I start looking. And then I start watching. Like, oh, they're pretty good. They're, and yeah, they're of all the ball. teams. They took down the Dodgers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. They, they took I, down the mighty Phillies. I want to think so bad that the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks are going to be much closer than ten games apart when this all is said and done. And that's what I'm looking for. And I, I, I truly so. do believe maybe that's my heart talking instead of my head, but I do believe that they will be a lot closer. The giants are actually, I hope... wait, hold on. Go um, ahead. Erod just, Erod just went down though. Like, I don't know about how long though. Ooh. We're hoping not long. We're hoping not long, but he had, he had to leave the, the last minor league, um, his last minor league start. And Tori Lovello is hopeful that he will be on the opening day roster, but not counting on it. I'm all, what, what, what are we doing, Tori? Like, why is that? A, why is that your quote, sir? So I mean, it's probably honest. It's the best we can ask for, honestly. Yeah. But no, I just think that guys like Gabby Moreno and Alec Thomas, like we 
just they had just started to scratch the surface. Like even Corbin Carroll was a freaking rookie. Like come on. They are going to settle in and they they have so much to play for that they've still got that fire. Yeah. I I just think we've yet to see the best of nearly every player on that team and that's really yeah. exciting. Yeah, and then like I, Randall Grichik they signed as well to platoon with uh oh, that's right. Randall Tri- mm-hmm. Grant Randall Grichik just had ankle surgery, I want to say. So I don't know how long he's down for. Um, so they have a rookie though, that is like making all kinds of waves. Blaze, Blaze Alexander. Blaze, yeah. Legitimately. He was aptly named because he's been tearing the cover off the ball. So I don't know if he ends up making it because he's been really pushing hard. So we shall see what happens with, with that. Astro Wharf Craig says maybe D backs won't have any gambling scandals. Maybe. <laughs> maybe and they will help. rise the ranks. Yeah, you never know. Okay, I have a Snakes Alive shirt. If the Diamondbacks get into the playoffs in 2024, will you two get Snakes Alive shirts and we can all wear those too? I'll buy it right now. Absolutely. I don't need, I don't need the playoffs. I'll do I'll do it right now. I'm not I'm not scared. I mean, oh, I look, I have a <laughs> I have legitimately only one other piece of other team gear. Yeah. Okay. Besides the Astros, I have one, and that is, is a Diamondback shirt, and it says, "We're fucking dangerous" with like the rattlesnake. <laughs> oh yes, I've seen it. Okay, let me ask you this: If you had to buy a Diamondbacks player's jersey, you can only buy one. Whose name are you getting on the back? Don't do that to me. That hurts my soul. So, so, so that's where I'm kind of like, uh, I'll buy a shirt. A jersey is kind of like ownership, and I, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Astro to the core. Okay, so but like, if someone was oh, going to give on. you a free I would, one, I would. I, oh, girl, well, I take that. Back. And I could, and I could tie it together. Yes, you could tie it together. I'm going to have to go with uh, my Asian brethren. I'm going to have to go Corbin Carroll. And the fact I, that he'll be a Diamondback for a while, so yeah. I would have a really hard time picking yeah. between. I am obsessed with Lourdes Gariel Jr. I just absolutely love him. Like no matter what team he was on, I would follow him anywhere. But I really like Gabby Moreno a lot too. And yeah. I'm just I have a fondness and appreciation for catchers. So yeah, that would be tough. I also think it's tough that the San Francisco Giants are predicted to have the same record as the Diamondbacks, 83 and 79. I do see that a little bit more realistically, uh, you know, as of late, they signed Blake Snell, of course. They also signed flamethrower Jordan Hicks, who they're going to give a shot to as a starter. And that trade for Robbie Ray, who is expected to come back and could be a difference maker for them in the second half of the season in their rotation. They signed third baseman Matt Chapman and DH Jorge Soler. They also, don't forget it, signed Korean star center fielder Jung-Hoo Lee. You guys, did the Giants do it? Did they have an offseason? I no, think they did. No, because I, do you know who their shortstop <laughs> is? You know who their shortstop is? Their shortstop is Nick Ahmed, who the Diamondbacks <laughs> fucking DFA'd last season. They were like, I'm sorry, Nick Ahmed. We know that you've been here for like, I don't know, 11 years, but you got to get the fuck out. They DFA'd him in the middle of the season, and they call, they called up the young guy. They called up the young guy. They were like, hey, "Let's go, let's go. You, you come, you come up." And then they were like, "Oh, just kidding, Geraldo well, Perdomo, they, come, come be over here." Like, no, no. The Giants they didn't want Brandon Crawford to stick around. Yeah. So, the 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 Giants fans in the chat, if you're here, I don't, I don't know why you'd be here, but if you're here, Gi- Giants fans, can you honestly, legitimately tell me that you are happy with your with your position players? Like, yes, you signed Matt Chapman for third base. Cool. You have Jung Hoo Lee. You have the two mics in the corner, Conforto and Yastrzemski. <laughs> okay, maybe. It's not late, a bad lineup, though. It's really late not. Late night, Lamont. Okay. All right. Like, I mean, they, almost, show. they almost made the playoffs last season. Exactly. And, and, and that one-two at the top. Say what you want about Blake Snell, because I will at a later point. Um, when he wants to be, he's good. He, when he wants to be, he's good. You know, um, I think that this team is at least going to be dangerous. I don't know if they're going to be good, but they, they on paper, they should be able to play with anybody. Yeah. Yeah, I think Blake Snell actually is a great fit for the Giants. He is less pedestrian, and everything about the way the Giants <laughs> approach to winning 
at least as of late, is very less pedestrian is a nice way to say it. But yeah, I just want them to be more fun to watch. He'll be the prettiest cheerleader in the room, okay? (laughs) Congrats. You've done it. Head cheerleader, Blake (laughs) Snell. Anyway, the Padres are projected to finish fourth in this NL West with an 81 and 81 right at 500 record. Of course, they traded Juan Soto to the Yankees, but they did get a good haul of pitchers along with catcher Kyle Higashioka. Hi, Kyle Higashioka. I'm like, I can there say this go. one. <laughs> Too much hard kombucha. That's what it does to you. Kyle Higashioka in return. They pulled off a trade for starting pitcher Dylan Cease, which has been all the talk as of late. And uh, if he returns to 2022 form, I mean, he could be a major difference maker this season for the Padres. They made scrappy bullpen moves like signing Wusako, Yuki Matsui, and Wandi Peralta. Didn't work out super great for them today, but it's only one game. Uh, after losing, of course, superstar closer Josh Hader to free agency. They did re-sign Jerks and Profar to play in the outfielder or in the outfield. And then they have so many shortstops, including Xander Bogarts, Hasan Kim, and 20-year-old Jackson Merrill, who I didn't even realize is actually by trade a shortstop. So here's how it goes. All the shortstops, Bogarts is going to play second, Kim is at short, and Merrill seems to now be their starting center, center fielder. fielder. So if anything... Legitimately, everybody is a converted <laughs> center fielder. <laughs> yeah. For they, the catcher. they really have some opportunity uh, in the outfield there. I don't know. Is that like the biggest thing that's lacking for the Padres? I mean, they have Tatis out there, but... The other two guys are like probably not everyday major league outfielders. Jerks and Profar is defense first, obviously. Like he's he's a pretty good like outfielder. Jackson Merrill, I think, is going to be sneaky good. I, I think. Um, I mean, he's young. I think you said he was twenty. I thought twenty. Maybe did he just turn twenty? Quite possibly, because I want to say he was like nineteen. But yeah. Uh, super young, and I think he came up when he was like 17. Him and like Ethan Salas were hanging out being fucking tutored. It's still <laughs> in like high school. You're all, oh, okay, you're supposed to be going to like senior prom, not being drafted and, and getting bo- sinus, like bonus sinus. Bonus signings? <laughs> bonus signings. On there we go. It's not I want all the guy. bonus sinus. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's good. Um, it's not like who who is Tyler Wade? I was all Tyler Wade. Where did where did you come from? Like over here? I I don't know. Um, Jay Cronenworth. Maybe we need to tighten up our gloves before the game. I'm just saying. You, yeah, we we'll double just... triple check that. Okay, <laughs> then maybe it won't cost you a game. Uh, I'm I'm really sad that th- this team is gonna be fourth. Like. Yeah, I think this is a good time to make my overall prediction, even though we haven't gotten to the last team in this division yet. Uh, Do we really need to talk about the last team? Not really. I'm very sorry, Rockies fans. My my overall prediction for the NL West is I do think it is going to be a closer race than what Fangraphs has projected. There may only be two, maybe three teams that that are closer, but I do think it will be closer. There's a lot of potential here. And I don't know, the Padres are kind of like the Mets last season for me of where I think they've had to be more strategic. They've had to take a different approach, but they still have some of those guys that they paid a shitload of money to. And if you can find the middle ground with both with having to be scrappy and strategic and also having some guys you spent big money on, I mean, those are the teams that, that, come out into the playoffs. So I'm not saying that I think the Padres are a playoff team, you know, put it into to blood or anything like that. But <laughs> I I don't think they're good. Yeah, I think they'll be at least a 500 club. I think there's every reason yeah. to believe so. And I, I don't think they like got that much worse. You know, well, and everyone's like, oh, but they lost Juan Soto. Okay. But like, look what you did with Juan Soto. Surely. Right. It can't, I mean, I don't know. And I feel like maybe that was part part of the issue because there is way too many pretty cheerleaders in the room. And like yes. and, and then again, if you're all hot, nobody's fucking hot. Okay. So maybe now 
there's one less well i guess two less hot girls in the room now and so now maybe the others can shine just a little bit more uh but you know hasan kim being the hottest of them all just putting it out there listen my fernando head... tati senior fans are like what the fuck Susie? you oh, don't know all, all of them okay all of them yeah they, they canceled you the minute you said that listen i'd like to think like my head says the dodgers run away with this thing my heart wants this to be an absolute bloodbath where yeah. they're all really like in the middle beat each other to death because mm -hmm. like you said what what they were able to do with Juan Soto, turning him into Dylan Cease, a bunch of prospects, uh, a Higgy for depth, and and all these things might have been addition by subtraction. Like, yeah. And, and I think Susie was kind of saying that. And then you look at what San Francisco did, and and, and we feel the snakes are going to be good. So like they could all just beat each other's brains in, and it could be like all really really close, two games separate one through four, and we're talking about them getting three teams into the playoffs let's go and we're all gonna be losing sleep staying up watching <laughs> west coast baseball i'm here for it i love Absolutely. that prediction okay we Absolutely. i am gonna mention the rockies to wrap up our, our national league preview here they are predicted to uh so the padres are predicted to win 81 games the rockies 64 Oof. 64 and 98 what did the rockies do this off season uh they signed Jacob Stallings, who was a former catcher for the Marlins. He is a, a gold glove catcher. Uh, I think he's going to be actually maybe their backup catcher, but he is really good at working with pitchers, especially young guys. He's had a great track record there. So I'm interested to see what kind of work he does in that vein specifically and working with a lot of their younger uh, pitchers. And then they signed Dakota Hudson, formerly of the Cardinals, who is a ground ball starting pitcher. So I guess I'm interested to see how Hudson and Stallings work together. But oh, I forgot the they signed Cal Quantrill. Oh yeah, him too. Okay, I'm looking for a comeback <laughs> here, from Cal. Do you, have have either of you ever been to a Rockies game? No, but I hear it's no. a must do. That's the thing. I, I hear the vibes are just immaculate. But I haven't been. I would need I would need a lot of oxygen. I, I'm a <laughs> unfit individual. <laughs> okay, and I like I I pant when I go upstairs. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I will just have a heart heart attack and die in Colorado. The Rockies are just kind of an anomaly to me because Bud Black, their manager, seems like a guy that's easy to root for. He seems like he's able to keep the culture in the clubhouse like really positive when all of these guys know that the organization is setting them up to fail. So I I would be so intrigued. Can we just like not do the Netflix documentary on? the Red Sox and just do it on the Rockies instead and, and follow Bud Black around and figure out like how he does it. I, I Did y'all know that Daniel Bard went down with arthroscopic knee surgery? No. I, I it's was like not that, aware. You know, if a tree falls in the woods and no one's around, does it happen? <laughs> so I, it's I, Daniel Bard, ladies and gentlemen. Daniel, <laughs> I, if, if Daniel Bard's name is like, you're all, why, why do I kind of recognize the name Daniel Bard? Like that's that's the guy who uh, hit Altuve in the World oh, Baseball yeah. Classic. Like yes. that that's the relief pitcher. But he went. But like the, I say that because he was an actual very good relief pitcher, just not in that instance, obviously. But I don't want to say their only good relief pitcher because you know that would say that the other guys are not so good. But you know it's what what are we doing here? But I didn't realize that uh, he went down. With knee surgery, that's crazy. Herman Marquez went down with 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 uh, TJ last season, which was their literal only good starting pitcher. Cal Did Quantrill's get him just back punching like air white right now. <laughs> um, so he went down May May twenty third, May of twenty three, not May twenty third, May of twenty three. So, um. I don't know. When is that? What is the turnaround time for TJ? Like it doesn't say when. And I'm not, I'm not so up on my, obviously all of my Colorado moves. So Rocky fans, if you're in the chat, shout out and let, let us know what the timeline is for Herman Herm Marquez. Rockies, <laughs> Rockies need a gambling scandal. <laughs> I agree. Um, I think TJ is like, like a, a year to a year gambling? and a half. I think that's like, yeah, I think so. Yeah. 
somewhere in the middle there. Okay. Yeah, especially for a pitcher. It's not like he's going to be trying to get back with the bat in his hands. Well, that's our... So who comes out of the NL then? Tell tell me who comes out of the NL. Who is the NLCS champion Mm. for next season? On paper, it's the Dodgers. You hope it's not. I'm not asking. I'm not asking on paper. I'm asking in in your heart, plus vibes, sir. The Braves of Atlanta. I think the Phillies. Okay. I want it to be the Diamondbacks again, but I wouldn't be mad at all if it was the Phillies. I know one thing: if the Diamondbacks even sniff it, you ladies will be letting the oh. world know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But oh my god. I would die. I would die. If it was the Astros and the Diamondbacks, I would die. I would like legitimately just die. <laughs> I would pass away. I will, yeah. if it's an Astros Diamondbacks World Series, I will come to Houston dressed as a snake for no! a <laughs> invest in the snake costume. That's fair. Well, it's got to be orange then. It's got to be an orange no, snake, snake costume. Okay. So you, okay. Have you have to you have to for enough. the bourbon and baseball faithful that are that are Astros fans. I will yeah. be fully decked out as an Astro fan. There there is no okay. there's no snake love when it comes to those two at all. It'll okay. be there will 100% be hundred percent Astros. Listen, 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 sir, listen. Astros are number one in my heart. Okay, it is number one in my heart, but. <laughs> The the D-backs are like a a distant two, and it would hurt. It would hurt my soul. I would still be rooting for the Astros, but it would it would hurt my soul. Yeah. Okay. Marmol extension seals the deal. That's it. That's, that's I forgot that, to mention that the is what the Cardinals. Boots. That's what the Cardinals needed was. Yeah, I forgot to mention the, the Marmol signing of the offseason. Hey, I'm not I'm not mad about it like a lot of other fans are, but hey, you never know. It could be the thing that sets the tone the vibes it could be the, the difference maker there who knows the Ben-Gay I, vibes. I want to he pick is the same age pictures like what are we doing <laughs> he is he is uh also the same age as my husband so i've really been every <laughs> every day i check with him just like you sure you don't want to fly down to jupiter i can look at flights let's just send you down and give it a shot he's he's pretty athletic he could probably you know, stand as good I mean, as anybody. Run it up there, huh? <laughs> if he have him work on a knuckleball, uh, the, the one of the pitchers for the Padres is is a knuckleballer. Uh, Cosgrove is that? No, it's not I thought Cosgrove. it was Waldron. Waldron, thank you. It was Waldron. Yeah, Waldron. Mm-hmm. Waldron has a mean knuckleball, and I, you know, just it could be a thing. Could be a thing. Just saying. So, are we ready to talk about the AL? Well, tell us who you think is going to be the pennant. And I'll pen it. Nobody. I don't want anybody from the NL. It just it just. <laughs> it's not, well, it's all someone has someone to play the that. Astros. I mean, has to play know, the fine. American has League. To, okay, fine. Um, I want it to be the, the D-backs. I want it to be the D-backs. I think realistically, it will probably be the Braves. They're both, man. I, that, I, that's a squad. Yeah, I want it to be the D-backs. I missed that. I hate that I missed that, but I love everything the Braves have done. Yeah, I for sure. Yeah, you can't deny it. All right, hit us up with that AL East, baby. Okay. So, well, in the chat, chat, if you guys have predictions, who do you think will be the NLCS winner? Will come out victorious. Put it, put it in the in the comments. Uh, and let us know. Holler at us. I was gonna say holler at your girls, but Tom is now here, so that no longer works. We'll so- remember. We'll give you a shout out if you're right. Six months from now. <laughs> Yes, we will. We will definitely go back and clip this for sure. For sure. Listen, I don't remember if I had breakfast this morning. Okay. Like there's just no way. Um, Okay. So in the American League, we're going to start in the American League East. I'm going to give you the rundown of team and record. Okay. We're going to do this first. Yankees, 88 and 74. Rays, 86 and 76 Orioles 85 and 77 Blue Jays my screen went out so I no longer know what the record is 84 and 78 Red Sox 81 and 81 like they pull out a a 500 season no what is 
what stands out in this AL East to y'all? Like, I need I need to know what stands out to you guys before I voice my opinion because there's something glaring here that I'm all. Is it just me? Do we all need new beer? Because I feel like we're all gonna drink. Cool. We yeah. all do yeah, need new beer, but we all can't. We all can't like leave at the same time. So. Okay, I'll go first. Okay, you go. I'll first. tell you what I think. Okay. Uh, my the number one most glaringly obvious thing is that the Orioles are definitely winning at least 90 games. Okay. Um, do they, do they end up third in the, in the AL? No. Okay. No, I think they win the AL East. And I, honestly, like, I don't know. I've heard everybody saying like, Oh, the Yankees are underrated. I think they're overrated, but maybe that's, I don't know. Maybe that's just me being an emotional fan. I think the Orioles win 88 games, absolute minimum. And that's if like some, they have really bad luck. And I think my overall prediction is that there's no way that the standings are that close. Like that's what 81 and 88. That was the yeah seven game yes. difference. Not a chance. The Red Sox are going to be way lower and okay. the Orioles are going to be way higher. Okay. Okay. I like it. Tom, I like it. Tom? So I grabbed two beers for the American League because I feel like we're going to need them. I believe that Kelsey is 100% right. When we talked about the Rockies, we were basically talking about the Boston Red Sox in the AL. They're going to be a 64-win team, something Shots like that. Shots fired, Tom. They, Damn. They, they are not going to this, – this division is top-heavy. The Baltimore Orioles are a 90-win baseball team. Yes. They're my dark horse to win the American League. It's yes. not even a question. The talent is amazing. They have so many resources to go get more talent. Like at the yep. trade deadline, who's going to stop Baltimore from getting whatever the hell they want? Mm -hmm. They're going to be like, ownership. oh, you want prospects? We got fucking prospects. Oh, you, you, you need somewhere to send a contract? We can do that too. We're not paying anybody. The Baltimore Orioles frighten the flip out of me and and i don't know how they don't win 92 games 93 games mm -hmm. the yankees they're they're got all this stuff stressing them out whether it's uh pitching problems because some of them are good some of them are bad rodon or you know cole who's injured then we've got uh Soto, everybody's like oh he's gonna hit 50 homers and i don't think he's gonna be that good i don't know no. why it is i just i don't and I mean, Tampa always is there. They figure it out. Uh, I, I feel like the Blue Jays will win a series here. There, I don't know, uh, but I feel like it's Baltimore and everybody else. Yep. Okay. Well, so then let's let's go let's go team by team, and we'll and we will flesh it out. Um, that was not the right terminology. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so the Yankees, the eighty-eight, apparently. According to Fangraphs, 88 win Yankees did did some moves, did some moves this this season. So the offseason was won by the Yankees, maybe. I don't know. They got Juan Soto from the Padres. Mm -hmm. They also got Alex Verdugo from the Boston Red Sox. They got Trent Grisham, that's apparently going to play in this in center field sometimes. I don't know. Um Carlos Rodon is going to maybe have a bounce back season. They signed Marcus Stroman. I don't I don't know what you guys are thinking playing Aaron Judge in center field all day every day. Like the fact that that this is what Yankee fans want blows my mind. Just It's cuz it's what Judge wants. I really think that's it. They hear him saying like that's what he wants. So and he is their golden boy of the whole world. Like he is the Taylor Swift yeah. fans. He can do no but wrong. But then I would, again, I, I want to bubble wrap him. Like, I don't even like the fucking Yankees. And I want to bubble wrap Aaron Judge. Okay? So there's no, there's no fucking way that you're going to sit here and tell me that Aaron Judge that already has some sort of, like, stomach oblique issue. It's not even the oblique. It's whatever other muscles are in there. Okay? Like, you cannot sit there and tell me that ailing toe, some sort of stomach malady... Aaron Judge is going to play center field for the New York Yankees every fucking day. Just, it's not going to fucking happen, people. It's not going to fucking happen. All right. Apparently, Stanton hit forty three home runs in this in this spring training game that happened tonight. I, I'm I'm kidding when I say forty three. I want to say he hit like four. 
Really? At least three. Yes. That is the one thing that I actually, and again, I'm sure this is a heart thing. I love G and I want, I would love to see him have a, a bounce back year and Yankees fans to get the hell off of his back. But I agree very much with what Tom said. Like, I don't think Juan Soto is going to disappoint per se. I mean, he will because he's not going to hit 50 home runs. I think he'll have a slightly above average season like he did last year. (laughs) And G came in underweight. He dropped like 15 or 20 pounds. G is the one guy that's probably going to ball out and it's going to get lost because the Mm -hmm. season's going to suck. And they're going to just be like, well, the Yankees suck. And G is going to be the one dude like putting them all on his back. And and I feel for the guy because he took all the shit when they were good, but he struggled. And now he's going to go out and ball, and everybody's going to act like, well, what does it matter if the team stinks? And mm-hmm. it's just, I hope they trade him. Like, I, I feel like G has been there's the one. There's nobody dude. that's going to take on that contract. Yeah. But maybe if, they, maybe if they own a certain part of it, maybe, just maybe. Who knows? But to your point, Susie, they are short a pitch, a starting pitcher, even with a healthy Garrett Cole. And that is the main reason I I think there's no way they're underrated. Like that's their biggest sore spot right now. Yeah. I don't think I don't think a I don't think a hurt Garrett Cole at the beginning of the season. I mean, they were teetering on the edge to begin with with a healthy Garrett Cole. And if Rodon could come back and if Nestor could be, be nasty Nestor and if Clark Schmidt could be Clark Schmidt. So that's a big lot of ifs. And now that Garrett Cole is down, your opening opening day starter here is Nestor Hortez. Marcus Stroman, we'll see what Marcus Stroman does. I want to say that maybe Marcus Stroman kind of balls out just as like a big fuck you to Yankee fans. <laughs> and just as like, I told y'all. I can told y'all, but nobody wanted to listen to me. Um, I don't, I don't know if I trust Nestor Cortez as, I don't know, like Carlos Rodon. What are, what are we doing here? Are you, are you going to bounce back? I hope you bounce back because you were nasty in, in San Francisco, but you don't know. You don't fucking know. There's a lot of, there's a lot of ifs. Too I mean, many. D- DJ LeMay, he was hurt again. Stays that way. And oh, so- and Stroman was the worst signing the Yankees could absolutely make because what? you got to believe he's going to have one bad start somewhere where he just gets rocked. It's what he does. And Yankee fans hated him to begin with. So what do you That's think? True. They're, they're going to boo him off that mound, and then he's going to block everybody that he unblocked on Twitter, and then it's going to be back to the same thing where they're back at war again, and then he's going to hear it when he's in the game. Every time he gets a, gives up a run, he gets, it's going to get booed, and it's just going to be – a whole show. I don't know. Um, I need to, I need to read off. I need to read off this starting rotation now. Okay. <sighs> Nestor Cortez as the one. Fangraphs has Nestor Cortez as the one. Oh, with and that. Carlos Rodon is the two. Okay. Marcus Stroman as the three. Clark Schmidt as the four. And Clayton Beater as the five. <laughs> uh okay. Sure. Um you you signed Luke Weaver. I don't know what we're. I don't know what you thought you were gonna do with Luke Weaver. I don't know if you thought you could fix him. I hope you could fix him because he has some nasty stuff. But everywhere that he's gone last season, I think he played for like four teams last season. He started yeah. with the Reds and then like went to the Mariners and then ended up with the Yankees. I want to say there was a stop somewhere else in between, but off the top of my head, that's where he was. But like, it's not. Maybe they can fix him. I don't know, but not as a starter. He he got lit up no, so hard no. as a starter. Cannot be a starter. Cannot be a starter. He needs he needs he needs to be a reliever. He's but they, I mean J- Jason Dominguez, I guess is going to come back sooner than they had expected. So that will be a a hopefully a big boon to them. Where does he play then? Wow. Is he deep? So um, maybe. Center field. Like he is their center fielder. If if he's healthy enough to be able to play out there. I mean, he will probably come back and my guess is he hits first before like he'll he'll be cleared to hit. And I mean, that's I guess up to where they're at and where their needs lie if they bring him up to just hit before he can play in the outfield. But he is their Why? center fielder as soon as he's ready for it. 
Yankee fans, if you're in the chat, I need I need answers. Why are you carrying three catchers? They have Jose Trevino, Austin Wells, and Ben Rortvet. I feel like Kelsey. Rortvet. Words are hard. Words are hard. While you guys talk about that, if there if there's a chat, if you guys can answer that, I'm gonna go get more drinks so that words like rort vet are going to be easier for me so talk talk easier? amongst yourselves and see if we can find out why there's three catchers i, I know i, I know trevino's the the main catcher but yeah rort vet or whatever however you say his name um he's built like a friggin' tank and they showed pictures of this guy he's probably juicing maybe i don't know um but he hits he hits a ton so oh, maybe wow. they keep him to dh you know he's the guy Every once in a blue moon. That's the only reason you'd carry three catchers is to use that guy at some point to put yeah. him somewhere else. If um, yeah, if if you have a catcher who can hit specifically. Mm -hmm. But I just I can't imagine like I've seen some Yankee fans on Twitter and they're just they're just done. They're like, Yes, it's over. And, and, well, and that's they, that's what I also don't like about I know again, I it's easy to like pinpoint fan bases for certain things. So I'm not saying other fan bases definitely do this, but the Yankees fans got to be some of the worst in terms of, if yeah, throwing away their season before it's even started. It's like, calm the fuck down. You have so many things to be excited about. Even if your team doesn't make the playoffs, just like, God, what a horrible mental place to live in. That must be. Listen, it's because it's because the Astros have beaten them. All of the ways from here to Sunday into all of the years. Okay? No, really. It's not that. It's the fact it that is. they've been the most dominant franchise yeah. since the beginning of time. They operate under the pretense that we're supposed to be a dominant franchise every year. And if they can't see themselves winning the World Series day one, yeah, they're done. Mm -hmm. Spring training. We'll see you next season. It's World Series or bust for them regardless of what their roster looks like. And it's a terrible place to live. Like you said, Yeah, but that's, that's the expectation. It's okay, interesting. So where, where in the AL East do the Yankees fall? What, second, third, fourth, third. Yeah. I think third, I wouldn't be like shocked if they got a wild card spot, but I wouldn't be shocked at all if they didn't either. And yeah, I mean, to your point, Tom, the the Cardinals are the other most winningest franchise in the postseason outside of the Yankees. So I can relate to that expectation, that level of expectation. But there is a difference between expecting your team to be relatively competitive and like just giving over to the nature of the game of baseball, that there is 162 for a reason, that there are only so many things that are in control. And that's part of what, as painful as it is, that we love about it, Yankees fans. So like, get on board, come on over. You got to be a baseball fan first and foremost. And part of being a baseball fan is knowing that no matter how much money you spend, no matter how stacked your lineup is, no matter how big the thighs are on all the guys on your team, it's it doesn't guarantee you anything and you still have to enjoy game after game day after day i don't know if i never hear 27 fucking rings ever <laughs> again it will be too fucking soon okay <laughs> it will be too fucking soon like th all i need to know is that the last time y'all won a ring was before baseball susie before yeah. baseball susie yeah okay? so just miss me with that shit like and the people <laughs> that are saying like the 27 rings motherfuckers you weren't like i'm pretty sure you were in diapers okay like did you did you even know who the fuck did you even know what baseball was did you even know what a baseball was like at that age stop just stop and it just <laughs> it, it cracks me up when when they when they say this and i just i'm like okay that's that's fine that's fine i i'm not gonna I mean, on the inside, I'm going to be that person that's going to be like, okay, name me the last winning World Series roster. If you can do that, then you can, then then you can tell me yeah. 27 rings. But and if you there, cannot tell is, me that that fucking roster, like, miss me with that. There is a group that can, that because it was 2009. There is a group, but there is also a huge group that were not on the planet when – 
the last time they won that ring. Yeah. And it's just blowing my mind that, you know, you get these people, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, 27 rings. It's like, man, y'all, y'all are right there with the Cowboys, the Lakers, that whole, that, that, that group. I'm still I'm still mind boggled that that is a that is a whole thing. Kelsey, you're also just a baseball girly, so maybe you also don't know this. There's a contingent, a whole contingent of people that apparently this is their thing. They like the Yankees, the Los Angeles Lakers, and the Dallas Cowboys as like their sport trifecta. Just because exactly. they win the most. That's so lame. And also, like, the Cowboys don't win anymore either, so move along. And they'll tell you about all their rings, too. <laughs> My dad is a Dallas Cowboys fan because he was born in Dallas. He has actually has, like, a reason. But that, honestly, that's the other thing that, like, drives me nuts is people who who change their allegiance or pick their allegiance exclusively because they want to root for a winning team. Like, I get it if you're a Rockies fan or an A's fan and – you have serious issues with the way that the organization is run and you don't want to support the owners hundred percent, but that's different than, you know, just there are so many people that are Yankees fans because it's like a cool pop culture thing to do. So I know there are plenty of Yankees fans that aren't like that. God, I'm going to lose so many followers because I have a lot of Yankees fans. We are. Well, I know you're not are like that, guys. Punching air right now. <laughs> I only have a couple of them, so not, I'm not hurting. It's not the Yankee fans that are that I interact with, like on a daily. That exactly. I actually know exactly. It's so not, I'm not talking people. about you. Yeah, yeah. It's the other. It's the other people. Like, and I'm not. And I, I realize that I sound facetious because it's <laughs> the tone. But I promise, people, I'm like, I'm not. Like, I actually, there are at least five Yankee fans. That's that's a lot of Yankee fans, people that I actually consider friends. Like I could name them and be like, Oh yeah, no, they're, they're not bad. It's just like the rest of you. It's mostly um, like but stuff I see them retweeting and calling other yeah. Yankees fans out on that. I'm like, these yeah. people, these are the people in your fan base. Yeah. Yikes. So, uh, but we just spent like 43 minutes talking about the Yankees yeah, and uh, we're going to move on. So we're going to talk about the Baltimore Orioles because this is a young fun team. Like I, I love them. Uh, one, because they are orange and that was really how I was going to pick who I started to root for as a baseball team. Like when I started liking baseball. So it just kind of <laughs> like, like okay. was great. It was just great. <laughs> that like the Astros ended up being I like them. <laughs> orange legitimately. So it was either the Baltimore <laughs> Orioles or the New York Mets because it wasn't going to be the giants. It was going to be either one of those two, but it just so happened that the Astros were orange. And I was like, okay, well it works. So, but regardless, the Baltimore Orioles are fucking fun as shit. And like, you cannot yes. sit there and tell me that watching the Baltimore Orioles is not a fun experience. I need to go to Camden Yards and sit in the fucking birdbath area. Like, yes. how, wh what kind of marketing team do y'all have down there that, that you're like, you know what, this is what we're going to do. We, uh, the, the players are going to spit the water onto the, onto the field. Um, so now we are just going to have someone in swim trunks, that is going to be their job. As soon as anybody hits an extra base hit, everybody gets soaked. Genius. I fucking love it. I realize that has nothing to do with the actual team, but it's really fun. Okay. If you've not watched a game, yes. just you should do it. Vibes, I'm also, yeah. Them. I'm also super obsessed with Camden Yards um, uh, batting, batting eye. Why, why are words so hard for me tonight? Is it because I've had the alcohols? I think it, it is. Be batters batter's eye there we go the batter's eye in in camden the astros play phenomenal phenomenally well there and i'm just saying that maybe just maybe uh if we at minute may changed it to look more like camden yards maybe <laughs> maybe we could win a fucking home game just i'm gonna just put that out there okay anyhow back to the orioles so i need you guys to know how many young guys they have in their system that are so good that they could probably be starters on the majority of teams right now, right now. Jackson holiday is the name that you guys know, but is not the name that has been tearing the cover off the fucking ball in spring break, in spring break, in spring training. Oh. Guys, I promise spring break. Not all the episodes are like this. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, Jackson Holiday has played his way onto the major league roster. Uh, however, the name that you guys need to need to really worry about is Colton Kowser. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Colton Kowser has been tearing the fucking cover off of the ball. And they they still they still have more guys that are like, I'm here. I'm here, too. Can I can I play? No, you cannot. We don't have any space for you because we are we have Anthony Santander in right. We have Cedric Mullins in center field uh, in left field. They have Austin Hayes. OK, so Jackson Holiday apparently is going to be their second base. Gunnar Henderson is just phenomenal. I kind of. I hate like Gunnar Henderson because it just it I really didn't want him to be rookie of the year. But he earned it, whatever. Uh, you know, <laughs> catcher, catcher of the of the century, Adley Rutschman. Is that record still hold for them? Yeah. That the whole like since never Adley has swept. come up, they've they've never been swept. Yeah. That's dumb. Oh well, yeah. That's so dumb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is absolutely That's ridiculous. Cool. So they have uh James McCann as the backup catcher, Ramon Ur Urias as uh, second infield, and then Jorge Mateo against right-handers, Ryan O'Hearn at first base for left uh, for lefty bats, and then, like I said, Colton Kowser has been there, um, has played his way onto the major league roster, we think, we hope, anyways. Oh, yeah. um, then they got Corbin Burns, and then we got some news that Kyle Bradish went down. Apparently, feeling good, though, feeling good. I really, really, really hope that he can come back because I need... I need to see the Orioles with a really good pitching rotation. And I need the people who don't know about the Orioles to not sleep on the name Grayson Rodriguez. Okay. Mm -hmm. He came up last season, kind of sucked. He went back down, figured it out his fastball, came back up, and then was like, lights out. He's young. Um, Dean Kramer is there as well. Tyler Wells and Cole Irvin. Cole Irvin apparently looks really good this spring. Um, I think he's one of the ones that went to tread and figured some stuff out. So that so that whole starting rotation, I think, is is kind of scary. Not going to lie. Uh, mm -hmm. My only worry, my only worry for this team is their closer. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I I do not trust Craig Kimbrell as far as I can fucking throw him. Oh, he's feeling good, though. He is. <laughs> he's feeling um, froggy. Okay. I do want to mention, have you seen Dean Kramer's hair recently? It is amazing. It is so beautiful. And it is the only time I've ever seen a man with his hair is like as long as mine almost. And it's the only time I've ever seen a man with like legitimately long hair. And I've been like, do not cut that. Don't you dare. <laughs> it is so, so pretty. I, I had no idea that he was even on my list of like best flows in baseball, but he's number one right now Interesting. that whole team's got run. locks right gunner i mean yeah maybe he was inspired by his teammates yeah to just really let it loose and go for it but uh, listen i would love to see craig kimball return to the kimball of of your i wonder if he's still using sweet child of mine as his song i think maybe if not he needs to bring it back because that was really when he was you know the potential hall of famer craig kimball that we know and love Okay, well, I that's my answer. Again, that, that was before baseball Susie. That was before baseball Susie. Craig Kimber was when a Craig monster was at one point. Yes, yeah. yes. But I mean, the this team is so deep. Like when that's the stuff you're talking about, they're gonna score a billion runs. Yeah. They're, they 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 tear the cover they off. Matter the ball. a lot less. And it's like <laughs> last year, the knock on them was their was their rotation. I think Corbin Burns helps that. I think their bullpen is still going to be really, really good. Uh, Guinier Cano is still there. I mean, I I think they've got enough to to deal with Kimbrel or 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 whatever the case may be. You yeah. look at this team as a whole, and you just feel like they're the team that's doing this number. And now they've got new ownership that's talking about spending money let and them it's spend like, some money. And that was the old, that was the other knock. It was like, doesn't matter how much young talent they have, they're never going to be able to spend on, uh, pay for them, and they're just going to trade them off or whatever. Not anymore. Now that's a team that I think if you don't get them in the next two years, you're not going to get them. They're going to be the mm -hmm. team to beat every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I, again, I love the Orioles. 
orange is my color they are they are sneaky so so good not even like sneaky so good like you should know that the orioles are fucking good mm -hmm. um if you don't you're just a hater like you just that's just it's the truth guys so um mm -hmm. chat if you agree if you disagree put it put it in the comments because i would love to see that uh but we're gonna move on and talk about the tampa bay rays the tampa bay rays are the rays like they're the just the most ridiculous arm factory ever and they just bring up guys and you're all i don't understand where you came from and how you are taking pitchers that are being defayed from other teams and then turning them around into i don't like sub two era pitchers but you know good for you let's love that so the shortstop situation has been cleared up jose caballero will be your shortstop okay. if you don't know who jose caballero is you haven't watched mariners baseball because legitimately jose caballero and jose siri i don't know who has more like flash and pizzazz like between the two of them I, that you want to talk about like big i don't want to say prima donnas because that, that's not the right vibe I'm, I'm giving off but like just big personalities machismo two in a room machismo yes that i can't wait to see what the vibe between those two are in the dugout so, you know, they have Randy Rosarena uh, still out there in left. Brandon Lau? Low. I always get that mixed up. Is it Lau? I think it's Low. I think it I depends know. on what day of the week it is. I think it's Josh Low <laughs> and Brandon Lau. And Brandon Lau. I, I think, think you're right. Yeah. I think. So, Brandon Lau is at second. Yandy, Big Yandy Diaz is at first. Jonathan Miranda is their DH. Isak Paredes at third. Richie Palacios. Richie. Right field. Uh, Jose Siri in center. Jose is Caballero. Richie's going to start. Player. You think Richie's going to start? Accord, according to the projected opening day roster oh, via yeah. fan graphs. Okay. Um, Rene Pinto as their catcher. And I, that is not a name that I'm familiar with. So I can't go into depth about that. Uh, and then their bench is Curtis Mead, Ahmed Rosario, and Harold Ramirez. I would say that that's a decent little, little bench there. Yeah. And their starting rotation, Zach Eflin, Aaron Savale, Zach Littell, Ryan Pepio, Tyler Alexander. Uh, Ryan Pepio they got from the Dodgers in that trade for Glass now. And the fact that he's just going to slot right in as like the four. I'm all, oh, okay. Look at you, Ryan Pepio. Like just that kind of kills me, but whatever. I I can now like you even more because you are a Ray and not a Dodger. So hooray. Um, they also got our guy from the Astros, Phil Maton. Oh, that's right. That Terminated. Anyhow, yep. Um, also, Chris Davinsky should be a familiar name to Astros fans. Pete Same Fairbanks value. is still going to be their uh, closer. Jason Adam, Colin Pochet, Phil Maton, Sean Armstrong, Garrett Clevenger. J all of these arms, you're all, what? And then if they go down, guess what? They have another no-name arm that they're just going to fucking <laughs> spin the ball and you're just okay and then they just always end up winning 89 88 90 games like like every year every fucking year so can i can i read you who's their pitchers that are on the il their starting mm -hmm. pitchers that are on the aisle this this one these fucking hurt shane boz taj bradley shane mcclanahan drew rasmussen and jeffrey springs De dealers that's a straight dealers all of them mm -hmm. that's a that's a dirty lineup that yikes yikes and i think they uh, get a couple Tosh of them back towards the end of the season um let's see <clears throat> shane boss had tj in 22 so i would assume yeah. so mm -hmm. um tosh bradley is just out with the strained pectoral i don't know how long those take to heal because obviously i may bump on a log uh Sh mcclanahan had tommy john in august of 23 Drew Rasmussen had the internal brace, uh, July 23. Jeffrey Springs had TJ, April of 23. So, I don't, I don't know if they're gonna. I mean, maybe Jeffrey Springs at the end. Maybe. I don't yeah. Know. Since we're talking about injuries, I do have an update on the, uh, the, the bruised lung. Mm. My brother yes, says please. that it is blunt force trauma is how it happens, and it is 
I was like, so like, how did that happen to a baseball player? And he says, it's probably most likely that he got hit like something like being hit in the hit with a baseball in the chest. Oof. So, okay. I'm back here. Wow. Yeah. All right. But, uh, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. The, the best part was my parents trying to tell me because for I texted <clears> the family text instead of just texting my brother directly. Big mistake. My parents trying to tell me like what it was when, <laughs> when they had no <laughs> idea. <laughs> That's that's amazing, and I love that so much. But anyway, we got some yes, some straight medical advice there. Um, so there was a couple of triple A people that are probably going to make the roster at some point this season. We just don't know when. So just be on the lookout for um, Junior Caminero and Os Oslevis Basabe. That was very hard. <laughs> and so just know just know those names be familiar with those names when they come up at some point in time uh in the season because i think they will probably be be there if jose caballero doesn't work out basabe will probably come up a shortstop um junior caminero plays third i want to say he plays shortstop as well so well we shall see what happens with the rays um Toronto Blue Jays. Toronto Blue Jays. Kev have we heard anything about Kevin Gosman? Do we know what's happening with so, Kevin Gosman? No. Chat, do you guys know? I'll Google that's, for any injury That makes me sad. Um, no. So they signed IKF. They re-signed Kevin Kiermeyer. They, I don't know why. Maybe because Kevin Kiermeyer is the hottest baseball player player alive. I think that's what they took into account. <laughs> um, and that's why they re-signed him, gave him a $10 million contract to play center field when Dalton Marsho is, you know, a better um center fielder, but that's okay. That is okay. So um th they signed Justin Turner. I think they signed Justin Turner for the vibes. Quite right? Possibly. I think so. Jose Brios is their opening day pitcher because Kevin Gosman is out. Yes. Update. He threw a sim game today for 36 pitches and it said it felt good. Hooray. Yeah. So it sounds like he'll okay. miss opening day, but hopefully not much more than that. That's good. Huzzah. I love that. Um, Davis Schneider, Ernie Clement is their bench. Apparently, they're they're rocking Kevin Biggio at second. Hmm. Okay. Give him another All shout out Kirk. there. Will you have a bounce back year? Don't know. Don't know. If you're on audio only, I am doing some weird like shrugging motion. Okay, I'm like Would you rather the shruggy emoji. Would you rather have, I feel like this is maybe a dumb question, but in a different time, this was a very valid question. Would you rather have Alejandro Kirk or Wilson Contreras as your primary catcher? Are we talking about like this, this day and age? Like right now? I guess so, yeah, we have to, right? Right now, Wilson Contreras. Probably the same. Because, yeah, yeah, I just asked because if you had asked me in 2022... If you had asked me in 2022, I was going to take Alejandro Kirk. But that's but no. the thing. And that's, you really, yeah, things don't don't ever, ever really go as planned. Uh, definitely not always. But yes, Cardinals fans were like crazed to trade for Alejandro Kirk. And especially those who were not thrilled with the Wilson Contreras signing. But yeah, now everybody's saying now, a different tune. Now Wilson Contreras can say nanny, nanny, boo, boo. He can do the sing-songy dance, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. See, this is this is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is my one of my favorite Yankee fans. Uh, Aaron, you missed the shit talk about the Yankees. Sorry, you missed it. You can shit talk me on Twitter afterwards. Um, but yeah, so I'm just I'm upset that you missed the shit talk, Aaron. Where were you? That's that's upsetting. Cool, love that. You'll go to the Mets. You'll go to the Mets. Lies, but you won't come to mine. I see how you are, Aaron. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, so does. I guess the big question for the chat too, does Vladdy have a bounce back year or does the curse of the cover get him? I've got another question. 
that goes along. You with cannot the same answer line. the question with the question, Tom. That's them's the rule. Well, I'm, I'm I'm helping answer the question with a question. So I play Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a little bit of a gambling thing. They have the over under. We don't need on, any gambling scandals. Say, uh, no scandals. Or debt no, no, too? No, maybe he bet on it. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. They have the over under on Vladdy for the season as 164 and a half hits. Do you think he gets more or less? I think he gets more than 164 and a half hits. Yeah, I think so too. I'd take the over. So, so for me, I think he does have a bounce back year. See, when I'm saying bounce back year, I apparently I'm thinking like 2019 Vladdy with like juiced balls. Are so, you only measuring in home runs or, or what are we talking? No, about? but for some reason, when, for some reason, when I, when I think Vladdy, I'm thinking power hitter, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like I need, I need Vladdy to be hitting bombs and that's, so that then wasn't we're him. Home runs. That wasn't him. But even, but even when he wasn't hitting bombs, he was just striking the fuck out. Like, <laughs> Okay, yeah. so if you're, I mean, if you're saying that like he's just going to hit me a bunch of singles, what what are we doing? You know, I don't think he's going to hit me a bunch of singles. Like I'm not calling him the next Luis Arise. Don't come for me, people. Okay. So let me ask I'm you just this: saying, if he what? bats, if he bats 280 and has 170 hits, but he only has 25 bombs, is that a bad season or is that a good season? What, are, what what's our what's our rubric? I think. <laughs> I think for him it's a bad season. I think for anybody else it would be a, it would be a fine season. But right. I think the the expectations for Vladdy I think are a little bit higher. I don't know yeah. if, be it be it the the show cover, be it bloodline, be it that I mean he was part of the young baby jays that apparently was going to be a fucking movie and all I got was a was a trailer. <laughs> okay? That's a, and maybe not even a really good trailer like it it pieced together and it got all the good parts of the movie all in the trailer and then like you see the movie and you're all what the fuck is that I, that's not anything like the trailer that's what i felt like that season was that's fair i agree with bad luck brian here in the chat i want to know what kind of bad luck you have brian but hopefully it's not as a vladdy fan because i do agree i think that he will have a higher home run total for sure and that what you're saying Susie, is like that's just who we expect him to be as that is who he is as a hitter. Right. So yeah, I don't think by any means you could say if he had the season that you put out there, Tom, that that would be a bad season by any means, but that's just not, that's not Flatty G. And, but, but I do think, yeah, I don't think that he was like a flash in the pan by any means. So I'm looking for the 35 to 40 homers this year. Good call, Brian. Okay. All I'm saying is give me the 2019 juice balls. That's all I'm asking for, people. Only for Vladdy. No, for oh. everybody. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, for everybody. Listen, it's a contract no, here for I'm Alex Bregman. Leaders. Okay. Listen, you're a Cardinals fan, ma'am. Like, you can't be saying shit. Okay. <laughs> like, <sighs> I don't. Uh, is there is there really any of the teams that can't say shit to us? Like, I don't know. Anyway, so. Exactly. <laughs> all right. So, I mean, do we even talk about the Red Sox? I don't, I don't know. Red Sox fans, are you? Are There's going to be the plenty of Red Sox coverage, so we hear. So uh, I don't know what they're covering. I, tell me exactly. Somebody tell me that I'm wrong. Like I can't see this team being competitive. Like I feel like 64 is the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like they're just going to be historically bad. Mm-hmm. Who's their opening day starter? It's Bello or whoever the Brian Bayo. Yeah. Yeah. Like like I. Who had like I mean, almost a five ERA last season? Yeah, I, I can't understand if that's your opening day pitcher. Like, I don't know what two, three, four, five look like, but it can't be good. Nick, it's Nick Pavetta, Cutter Crawford, both of whom may or may not stick in a starting lineup. I, Tanner Houck, Garrett Whitlock. Like, ah. it's not, it's not good. It's not good. Where, people. where does Baseball Reference get? Or that's who we're using, right? Baseball Reference is. Uh, Fangraphs. 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 Where Fangraphs is Fangraphs, Fangraphs getting these wins from? Who are that? That division is not an easy division at all. When you talk about the other teams we named, where who are they beating? Right. I don't. I don't know. I don't know who they're beating. I, I, I'm a little shocked though because now Chris Sale is dealing for the Braves, and and Boston fans are just like, "What the fuck, Chris Sale? <laughs> we we gave you we all the that. money." Yeah. Like we were here, we were you destroyed through, a whole we clubhouse. We were here through all 
of the bad times, and now, now you're gonna be good for the fucking Braves. I, they're they're down bad. I I don't know. The writing know. was on the wall um, with that one. That's just well, the way it was gonna go. He so wrote it. I, may, yeah. may, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Maybe maybe Masataka Yoshida takes a step up. Maybe I don't know. Sedan I do think, yeah, they might have a couple guys that are fun to watch, but that's that. that they is have the like a couple of scenario. young, younger guys. Apparently, it's not they're they're not going to do anything this season. Apparently, they got to wait until twenty five to maybe even make some noise. Their owner just really wants to play with the golf team and the soccer team. I don't know. I don't do any of the other sports. But all I know is yeah. that he's just putting money not into the Red Sox. Well, no, yeah. that's not true. They just paid Rafi Devers all that money. Right. I'm pretty sure because if they did not pay Rafi Devers, the people would mutiny. The fans would literally mutiny. Okay? There would be riots in the fucking streets. There's no I mean, way. Not to get all all heady in the business sense here, but and and this is me. I'm laughing as I'm starting to say this because this is me assuming that people who have a shitload of money are like good business people, which is just not always true. But if there is any any like business 101 going on in with the Red Sox ownership, they're not looking at. I th I've heard a lot of people saying like, well, they don't care because yeah, the soccer team and the golf or whatever is making them money. That you don't you don't look at the wins of one business to, to compensate for the losses of another. Yeah. So I don't think that's the case, but it is very, very confusing. I think they are the most misleading and confuddling. <laughs> if that's a word. I don't, team I don't know what the, right what the fuck this Netflix documentary is going to be about. Mm -hmm. Like I, I feel like they're stuck between trying to tear it down to bare bones and starting over and staying relevant because they're the Boston fucking Red Sox. That's probably. And I think really that's the, the the name on the jersey where they like we have to defend this mm -hmm. to an extent, and it's like so then they're making all these irrational moves, and the product isn't going to reflect the money that they spent. It's just going to be a really bad. Yeah. So I, your 2024 Boston Red Sox people. I I don't know. <laughs> And just so you guys know, we won't be spending this much time on the AL Central uh, because it's the it's the, <laughs> the AL Central, AL guys. Central. I'm, I'm so sorry. So let's uh, I will tell you, though, who is going to win the AL Central. And that is the Minnesota Twins. Don't you know? Uh, with 84 wins, 84 wins, 84, 78 takes the AL Central. The Guardians and the Tigers apparently tie. 79 and 83 uh the royals with a 76 and 86 record and the white Sox with the 67 95 record what stands out to you in the central there you go first besides the ridiculous winning loss totals i was about to say the white Sox are too high you can't you can't win 67 games with an 083 martin maldonado batting as your catcher like, uh, apparently he is tearing the cover off the ball and he looks much slimmer going into white Sox camp and he's hitting like 329 uh it'll he'll be 083 in like like two games and he'll stay there and he sent <laughs> he sent fucking Corey lee packing again Corey lee cannot oh, fucking stay at, at, at catcher uh that was not we'll, we'll get to the white Sox, but that was not what i was going to point out here what i was going to point out here was the fact that the Royals were so fucking low. Yeah. Like I all agree. the moves the Royals made and they don't they don't at least hit five hundred. Like yeah, they have I, an actual like rotation now. I agree with Tom that I think the White Sox will very likely be the worst team in baseball this year. Over hundred losses Hold on. easy. So you're so you're they're taking that mantle from the A's? Yes. I think Ooh, okay. it will be worse than the A's. Uh, I think the A's have some younger guys that at least have more to play for. But I will drink to that. Yeah, I, I also think drink. the Royals will be better than 76 wins. But I also think the Tigers could Tigers win the boys. division. So I do Ooh. think I do think the the twins, the Tigers, and the Royals will be closer than projected. 
I think the reason the Royals are where they are is because somebody has to see it. They just have to see it. Like mm-hmm. that's a team where on paper you kind of look at them like, okay, they got some nice pieces. I like them, but I have to see it. And until they until they actually win the games, you know, they're just kind of going to be in the middle somewhere. I do love your Tigers take. I think that uh, AJ Hinch will get those guys right over mm-hmm. time. I think they probably need one more season, and um, it's the AL Central. I mean. It's Do not. you think so? <laughs> this has the Fangraphs is predicting the Twins win the AL Central with 84 games and the Cardinals win the NL Central with 83. Do you think <laughs> the AL Central is one with more or fewer games than the NL? Fewer. Yeah. I, I like I like the teams in the NL Central better than the AL Central. I think like I've as an NL Central fan, I've always like I know the central divisions, I know where we lie, but I've always held myself like, you know, to that standard of but at least, you know, we're not the AL Central. So that yeah. hurts me. Offended <laughs> fan graphs. I gotta take a big drink for that one. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. So let let me I guess I'll let me tell you about the, the twins. The twins didn't the twins got into the playoffs for the first time in, I don't know, like a bajillion years, apparently. And I stupidly thought that since the twins got into the playoffs that they were like, Oh, let's do shit. Now they did not. The RSN money was up in the air and payroll was going to be down. So they were like, "Mm, let's not make any moves. So bad luck. Brian says that he doesn't think that people should sleep on the Royals. We will get there, Brian. But yes, I, I agree with you. Um, I So the Twins, I think, are going to be, I don't want to say sneaky good, but I think they're going to be better than than people think. Um, I think Carlos Correa will be better. Byron Buxton, I don't know if Byron Buxton, if they have a health, full healthy season of Byron Buxton, and I think we've been saying this for years, in center field, like, it, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's fun, and that's going to be good. Um, Kelsey's cat agrees with me. Edward Julian <laughs> is their second baseman, and apparently he is amazing and tearing the cover off the ball. Royce Lewis, also another guy that you probably should keep in the back of your brain as the third baseman. Max Kepler is the hottest right field guy that you will ever see. Like Max Kepler, absolutely. Uh, Carlos Santana is their first baseman. I didn't. I totally forgot that they signed Carlos Santana as their first baseman. That's just that I that was not on my radar. I totally forgot about that. Matt Walner is their left fielder. Ryan Jeffers as their catcher, and Ryan Jeffers just kind of took over. Like Christian Vasquez, they signed Christian Vasquez to a, like a two year contract. I want to say, uh, and he's now their backup. He's and he went to drive line or tread in the off season, One of those, and like redid. Tried to redo his swing. Um, congrats. They're expecting a new baby. So maybe he'll get some of that like dad mojo energy back. I don't know. But like Ryan Jeffers just kind of took over that catching job. And I think Christian Vasquez kind of is like, cool. That's that's fine. My knees hurt. You can be the starting catcher. I'm going to just sit over here and collect a paycheck for a little bit. Right. And then I'll go hit. Um, their starting rotation, though, is kind of sneaky good. And it's not names that you know besides Pablo Lopez. Mm-hmm. Okay. Unless you watch this team day in, day out, it's not names that you're going to recognize. Joe Ryan as their two. That's the guy that looks like the guy from Stranger Things. Uh, Bailey Ober. He's like ginormous. He's like 6'7, six, 6'8. Six, oh, yeah. uh, Chris Paddock and Louis Varland. And there's twins are out. Twins fans are out on Louis Varland. There is like a big contingent of I am hardcore Louis Varland fans. And there is a big contingent of, oh, my God, get Louis Varland the fuck off my team. So good to know. It's not just the Astros that have the crazy fan bases. So their (laughs) bullpen is one of is one of the scariest to me kind of bullpens because I'm all what like what what are we doing here? Uh, But. Why? Yuan Duran. I didn't realize Yuan Duran is now on the IL. What? Oh, that was the main reason he, he was the scariest bullpen guy. With a strained oblique, and that happened, that just happened. Oi. Oh, no. That's what happens when you throw that, hard. 
Mm-hmm. Caleb Thielbar with a strained hamstring. So their current bullpen as it lies is Griffin Jacks as their closer, Brock Stewart as their ace inning guy, Jorge Alcala, Stephen Okert, Justin Topa, Josh Stalmont, Cody Funderbunk, Funder Burke. My eyes are going, guys. <laughs> and Jay Jackson. Now, I need you guys to know, if you are a fan of one team, and that is your main team, but you know the relief pitchers for the other team, like you are in deep, okay? Yeah. I am not in deep with the Minnesota Twins. I cannot tell you the majority of these guys. Like, I've heard of Griffin Jacks. I've heard of Brock Stewart. Those are the only two guys that I've heard of. Um, besides you want Dron, who now is hurt. So we don't know how long he's going to be out, but you want Dron is nasty. So maybe, just maybe, if the twins aren't doing anything, maybe they'll trade somebody. They're not gonna trade you on Dron, <laughs> but that's a that's a pipe dream of mine. So I I don't know. I cool twins, you win the AL Central. Gardos. What what are we doing, Guardians? Like we we just gave Jose Ramirez a contract that is that is like way below retail value and just not signing anyone else. No, so, so oh. I I can speak to that. So J Ram is a huge fan of Cleveland, mm -hmm. like the city, the area, everything. He gave them a hometown discount because he didn't want to leave. Mm -hmm. He was happy where he was. He did not care that he could make all the money elsewhere. And that was just a cool move on J-Ram's part. The rest of it, I feel like, is they're just waiting for the kids to grow up. Because once yeah. they do, then they'll be set. But okay. I do think well, that Josh, well, Josh Naylor, we know, is fun to watch. I do think Bo Naylor, who is his brother, how cool is it that they're both going to play on the same major league roster at the same time? Uh, I think Bo Naylor is going to be a more integral piece of that team this year. So... I just am truly indebted to the Guardians organization forever and ever for bringing my catcher, Yainer Diaz, to the Astros. Thank you so much for liking Bo Naylor over Yainer Diaz because I will take Yainer all day, every day. That's not a slide on you, Bo. That's just, that's how much I love Yainer Diaz. What, why? Why is Miles Straw your center fielder? Guardian fans, I need, I need, I need to know. Because things. they paid such a heavy price for him. <laughs> they have to get their money's worth. <laughs> they have to keep him. <laughs> I think the Guardians outfield hit the least combined home runs of any major league outfield last season. Do you think that will be the same this upcoming season? Abs Absolutely. Do you know why? Cool. Because in like the, the projected home first. runs, the projected home runs for Miles Straw, two. Two. As an outfielder. Yes. Yeah. tough. As an outfielder. Okay. Center field. <laughs> He's going to catch all the balls <laughs> with his mitts. <laughs> he, he will, he is going to run down everything uh, everywhere in the outfield. Okay. You're that's what you're paying him for. You are paying for it. The wheels. Apparently when his speed is gone though, cause I don't know what's happening out there. I, I want to say that they have a center fielder coming up though. That is, that is supposed to be really good. And you're like, what? But what are what we just paid Miles Straw? So we have to play him. But they have some gold glove defense in um ah, Will Brennan. That's that's who I was talking about. Will Brennan. Left-handed bat, drafted in the eighth round, and uh apparently has a 707 OPS. Is project that's he's projected to have a 707 OPS if he ever apparently gets up, but apparently he is amazing. I feel so badly because Miles Straw is a gem, but like Miles Straw, what, sir? sir. Come on now, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I just feel so badly. I feel so bad, but between him and like Stephen Kwan, that is like the lightest hitting outfield ever. Who plays the right field? Ramon Laureano. I forgot that they got Ramon Laureano two seasons ago. I, I, I. Ramon Laureano you, can run into a few. You know who they could really use? Known power hitter, Mauricio, Mauricio Dubon. Dubon? <laughs> the fact that Mauricio Dubon is going to hit more, more home runs than, <laughs> than fucking... Oh, my God. Uh, talking about the Gardos, though, 
a true test of the Tampa Bay Rays superpowers with pitching is Savale because he pitched for the Gardos and he was just a guy. He was not very good. If he goes to Tampa and deals, you'll know something's up because he was he was there forever and wasn't very good. So if he shows up in Tampa. Well, but but that, see, that's the other thing. Like, I want to say that the Guardians also are a are a pitching factory, but like in a different kind of way. Because their starting rotation really is Shane Bieber, Tristan McKenzie, Tanner Bybee, Logan Allen, and Car- Carlos Carrasco is your five. I'm very sorry, Guardians. But I- Mets fans are cracking up over here. Um, if if that rotation can go, I mean, it, Shane, I need Shane Bieber and, and, um, and Tanner Bybee to be really good because I drafted both of them on my uh, fantasy team. So I need both of them to be very good. Okay. I just, I'm putting that out into the ether. Um, they signed Austin Hedges in the off season. Um, World Series champion, Austin Hedges. I don't want to like Austin Hedges, but I kind of love Austin Hedges. The fact that he is even worse of a bat than Miles Straw. That's saying something. But they didn't, but they didn't sign him for that. They didn't sign him for that. They signed him to be that, that backup catcher, that be that veteran presence, and to kind of help Bo Naylor, right? And he knows his role. He ain't trying to be the the starting catcher, but that I I don't understand how the Guardians and the Kansas City Royals have the same fucking record. Like Kansas City went out and made moves. They made so many moves. They have an actual starting rotation now, like and a, a like a good one, like a sneaky kind of good one. If Brady Singer can figure the fuck out, like Cole Reagans. Okay, I just this is just a slight on the Texas Rangers. I need Cole Reagans to say nanny nanny boo boo to the Rangers because he's just dealing sneaky Cy Young pick, guys. That's my sneaky Cy Young pick is Cole Reagans. Don't American give me that League Cy down. Young. Yes, I said a sneaky. lot of. <sighs> that's really sneaky. <laughs> like no one's seeing that coming. Okay, I'm not saying that I'm putting money on this. I'm just saying okay, that, okay, like, okay. I right, I see like, you, Susie. I don't disagree mm-hmm. at all. I no, I think the kid's no. good. I, I I agree with you. I think he's really good. I think the Rangers are gonna absolutely hate that trade. Like they may already, but Cy Young though, wow. Saying Fine. something, you you cannot tell me that 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 rotation of the Rangers right now that they would not covet Cole Reagans oh, in that rotation right now. Absolutely. So now they have, but now they, they went out and they signed Seth Lugo and Michael Walker. So now they're like one, two, three are actual like real pitchers. Okay. As opposed to the, the paper airplanes that they had out there last season. Uh, I think Michael Walker is also just like a sleeper pick for anyone's rotation. And I'm surprised yeah. that one of the bigger market teams didn't pick him up and be happy to pay him what the Royals paid him, if not more. No. Yeah. So if Brady Singer can figure it out, I mean, they still have Jordan Lyles as their five. That just cracks me up that Jordan Lyles is is their five. Is Zach Greinke going to just hang out <laughs> in the bullpen somewhere or just like walk around the stadium and just randomly give out hitting tips? I need to know these things. He can do whatever he wants. He's he's goaded, as the kids say. This this is true. Um, but I think the fact that Vinny Pascantino is gonna is going to be back. I think, like, lineup-wise, I think I like this lineup over the Guardians lineup. I mean, your your center fielder is Kyle Isbell. Your right fielder is Hunter Renfro. Your left fielder is MJ Melendez. Okay? So you got some you got some speed. You got some pop. Not much pop, but more pop. I mean, Bobby Wood Jr. got that big extension. I think he's going to go off. You got Salvi Perez, who apparently is like 32, but has been in the league for 43 years. Uh, Nick Prado is their DH. I I don't know. I just, I think they're going to be sneaky good. Sneaky better, at least. I think they're going to be better than the Guardians. Um, I don't know. What do y'all think? I feel like you're right. I just, I mm-hmm. think the reason the, that, uh, Fangraphs has them where they are is they just have to see it. 
I think in that division, obviously we talked about the the rotation for, you know, the Twins. We talked about the rotation for the Gardos. You know, those teams seem to have a tendency to figure it out, you know, and, and just kind of compete with each other for that division. And I think they just figure that it's going to roll the same way it's done the last two or three years where those two just kind of went back and forth and somebody figured it out and got it done. Yeah, I think it's because they are the Royals that, like, that's the best answer that I have for that. But And they, again, they did it more strategically. They didn't go out and sign a couple of the biggest free agent names, but they didn't need to because they signed enough of the middle guys to make for a better balanced team that could very realistically be much more competitive than last year. The other question is who's their closer? Oh, Will Smith. Yeah, probably. Most likely. That's probably not good. Cole Reagans, Cole Reagans, Cole Reagans is going nine. Okay. <laughs> Cole Reagans is going nine. Um, James McArthur, apparently. It says James McArthur oh, and Will Smith. Yeah. Uh, John Schreiber as their setup guy. Nick Anderson, Chris Stratton, Josh Taylor, oh, yeah. Sam Long, and Matt Sauer. Again, if you. Royals fans, where where are you? I I recognize exactly one of those names. Technically two. I recognize John Schreiber's name. Um, oh, and I guess Chris Stratton, but for not being very good. So, yeah. how, how are we feeling about your bullpen, Royals fans? How are we feeling about your your bullpen? I I don't know. Cole Reagans is going nine. Okay, that's that's all I care about. <laughs> he's gonna need he's to to win that Cy Young you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's gonna carry the Royals on the on his fucking back. All right, Just, you you hush. Um, do we need to talk about the the White Sox? We we kind of th- this Luis, makes me so sad. Luis Robert to the Strohs. Let's go. Oh, where that the is fuck a are we going to Luis Robert? Where the I don't fuck care. Are we That's such him? a fit. I hate Center it. Field. I mean, I don't hate it that much. It's fine, but <laughs> yeah, that's and and and. We're done. We're done here. It's over with. It's begging Before to be we, done. Okay. <sighs> aye, aye, aye. All right. So they, they, the White Sox dealt uh, Dylan Cease. <laughs> I got stuttering over that one. <laughs> I, there's just, there are Woo! no words. White Sox dealt Dylan Cease to the Padres. And in return, they got, they the got. officially waved the, the white flag on the 2024 season. All the way. Yes. Yeah, it was like um, already like in their pocket. Now it's just out and probably waiting. I uh, where are you in? A, I mean, if you're in a full fucking rebuild, then just tear it the fuck down. Like, what are we doing? I, you still got some good pieces. So are you just waiting till the trade deadline to to up the ante? Is that what is that what they're doing? Okay. Mm-hmm. So Andrew Benintendi is their left field. Uh the highest ever contract given to. Any White Sox player ever, Andrew Benintendi. Not the name that you would think. Um, Yuan Moncado at third. Luis Robert Jr. at center. Eloy Jimenez at DH. Andrew Vaughn as your first baseman. Paul De- Paul DeYoung, shortstop. Uh, Dominic Fletcher, right fielder. Martin Maldonado, <laughs> fucker. Uh, catcher and Nicky Lopez at second base. I feel badly for Nicky Lopez because he went from like the, the Royals to then he got like a just the teeniest, tiniest taste of what goodness could be on the Braves. And then they said, fuck you. You got to get out. And then he had to go to the White Sox. And now I'm he all. He balled out shit. too on, in Atlanta. Right? Too. He played good. Like, yeah. poor guy. I mean, at least at least on the Royals, like you had some fucking vibes. I don't know what the fuck you got in in Chicago. I Maybe, maybe Martin Maldonado cleans it up. Hopefully. I don't know. I don't know. That's what he was known for, for the Astros, right? Like he could, he works with the pitchers really well. He was a clubhouse team leader. That's literally what like every Astro player fucking told all of the reporters. I don't know how much money Martin Maldonado gave it, gave them to say that. I don't know. Okay. All I'm saying is that this is what has been said. What if, (laughs) what if, Martin Malnoto does clean up the 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 vibes. Uh, Paul DeYoung apparently has very good vibes. Okay, yeah, he's Paul DeYoung stand helps. Stand up guy with with the with the vibes and 
maybe Nikki Lopez is like, guys, we I got to play better. Like I got, come on, like let's go. Y- Yuan Moncada like stays healthy, maybe. Elo Jimenez also stays healthy, maybe. Maybe they take up yoga, and they don't have like strained quads and. I know some good and- yoga studios in the Chicago area. Hit me up, White Sox. We can go to yoga together. Let's do it. Also, I'm available as like a vibes coach for the right <laughs> price. I'm here. You're gonna. They're, they're gonna need it. They're gonna need it because. Can you speak Spanish? <laughs> no, but I really need to get on that. I really wish I could. Ooh, I downloaded. Let's, let's learn Spanish together, Kels. I I downloaded an app and I am I am embarrassed to say I have barely used it, but I really I do I really want to learn Spanish. I think we all like Chicago pizza or the hot dog they got going on over there. Uh, Have you guys had Uh, deep dish pizza? I don't think I've had legit deep dish pizza. I've had like somebody's interpretation. I I feel like, I feel like until I have it in Chicago, I'm doing it wrong. I, um, I've never had, I've never had deep dish pizza ever. And I don't think I really want it. It just like makes me tired just thinking about it. Honestly. Um, I'm a, I'm a thin crust. I'm a New York pizza over Chicago pizza gal. But that being said, I mean, it is a decadent treat. When I was doing million dollar quartet here in Chicago, I was the only woman in the show and we would have two show days on uh, a few days a week. And as part of our actor union contract, they had to feed us between those shows because there was only so much time between the shows. And the guys always fucking wanted to order Lumal Natty's deep dish. And I was like, we have another show to do and I cannot fall asleep on this couch after I eat this one piece of deep dish, which is the most I could ever possibly fit in my body. So yeah, I'm going to go with a Chicago dog. Have you had a Chicago dog? I- Astro Wharf Craig asks... Or says stuffed spinach pizza is best. And I have so many fucking questions now. <laughs> that, that actually that sounds good. This to me. pod is going to go so much longer because I need questions to this fucking. Wh- to this answer? <laughs> Stuff. That, yes, what you, what you said. Where answer do we get this? Question. I want to try it. Stuffed spinach pizza sounds really good to me, actually. I I have Astro Craig come are you typing you should probably be typing hopefully you're typing um bad like Brian says I gotta go with New York style pizza Please I'm not like a super thin crust like I I like a little bit of crust I just don't want it all to be ooh Giordano's crust. okay I'm on it okay I I don't know what this is so apparently after after the pod I will I will Google where they're all over the place finished pizza come on over is. yeah because apparently. That is more interesting than talking about the White Sox. Oh, and with that, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the AL Central because that is it, that's all there is. To know. That is the most exciting thing about the White Sox this season. Is I will Absolutely. say the White Sox have better Chicago dogs at guaranteed rate than the Cubs do at Wrigleyville. I said it. What? What is wow. a Chicago dog? What's a Chicago dog? There is I a, can't an actual, understand it's like an actual that. thing. Yeah, it's, it's a, it is. I'm not going to remember everything that's on it, but there's like banana peppers, a whole pickle, um, tomatoes, mustard, maybe. there's The big thing is there's definitely no, there's basically everything but ketchup that you could ever want on it. <laughs> Relish. Yeah. No ketchup. Ta- hold, hold on. Y'all motherfuckers are out here putting tomatoes on oh, your yeah. hot dogs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The fuck are we doing? The only we're probably Texas is probably the worst about like hot dogs. Everywhere else, they dress them up with all kinds of all, all kinds of condiments. Well, I'm sorry, I would okay. pick Tex Mex any day over a hot dog, so I don't. Uh, it's okay, that. Texas. I don't need you to be good um, at hot dogs. Yeah, yeah, we, we got big, pizza. we got barbecue and Tex Mex. Come get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Thin crust pizza is like having a sample of pizza at a Sam's Club. <laughs> Shots fired! Wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't, they yeah, haven't had Blaze. Blaze followed, is so followed, good. Yeah, Blaze followed is good. up with eat real pizza. <laughs> That's I I love that I love that the end of the Chicago White Sox just devolved into a food. That's I love that. We're gonna we're gonna come back on track and we're gonna talk about the AL West. AL West, guys. So the AL West, this is this is how it's projected. The motherfucking Astros are going to take the AL West according to Fangraphs roster resource. That's not me. That's Fangraphs. 90, 90 wins 
and 72 losses. I have so many words for fan graphs. We're going to say them in a minute. The Mariners are the second spot. The Mariners uh, with 86 and 76. The World Series reigning champion motherfucking Rangers. Always fuck the Rangers, people. Always. 82 and 80. Angels, 78 and 84. And the Athletics, 73 and 89. Better than the Sox. Better than the Sox. Absolutely. Um, Words. I have so many words for, for, for this right now. We won 90 games last season with a hurt Jose Altuve that didn't play for like four months. A hurt Jordan Alvarez that was out. A The biggest of black holes of Martin fucking Maldonado. We had a roving DH out there of no name motherfuckers. And we they have names. Peak. Stop that. They're great catchers. John Singleton. Why Madrid. Madrid? No. They have names. Say it's, their names. <laughs> people in the chat are like, who the fuck is Bly Madrid? Except for maybe Mets fans, because Bly Madrid is now on the Mets, apparently. But no one Say is going names. to know Bly Madrid. Come on now. Uh, we eat, eked our way into 90 wins with a fucking carousel of outfielders. So you cannot tell me, you cannot convince me. There's not an amount of money in the fucking world that is going to convince me that the subtraction of Martin Maldonado from this lineup, we're not going to just run into at least, at least two more runs, at least. Okay, but with like a full season of Altuve, a full season of Jordan, not a fucking carousel Outfield carousel out there because apparently Jake Myers has just been tapped as our fucking center fielder. Um, okay, so you cannot convince me. Cannot convince me that we will not win more than 90 games. That's just the, that's all there is to it. Is there a tiny bit of panic and anxiety in my soul because of our starting rotation? Not gonna lie to you, people, because I am an honest podcaster, and it's just a just the teeniest, tiniest, just a seedling of anxiety and panic over in this region. But that's okay. I have faith. I have faith in our boys. Okay, Fromber is going to figure it the fuck out. CJ came in fifteen pounds lighter. He's gonna. I think he has now realized the workload. Last season was his first real season as like a big boy starter. I think he's going to figure it out. Um, Hunter Brown. I think he's going to step up. JP France has just been consistent over there. And like Astros fans, we gave JP France a lot of shit. But he was, he was, I'm, I'm not going to say like really good, but he was a great like fifth every five days. He was a great innings eater. Okay. Um, I'm hoping, I don't think it's going to happen. Because I think Brandon Bielak will probably come up because he doesn't have options left. But I was hoping that Rona Blanco would, like, insert himself. Now that Jose Arquiti is down with forearm... Tightness. Is it a forearm strain? Is I thought it was a strain. I thought that was, like, a thing. No? I think it, it started as tightness and became a strain. You're right. Oh, okay. I think you're right. So, but there is not a... It's not a tear or anything like that. Um, no. Garcia and McCullers are gone. Garcia... I th I think Garcia is going to come back. Glass Elbow McCullers, whenever he would like to make his appearance, I'm going to just count it as as a lucky penny. I think Luis Garcia will be back, and I think he will be good. Um, We added Josh Hader, big piece in our, in our rotation. The, the, the arguably best... Postseason closer has now just been moved from the closing position to the setup guy, the most expensive setup guy oh. on earth, apparently. Yes. And then we still have Brian Abreu, who is going to be the the seventh inning guy. Like, if if we if we can if we can score some fucking runs, maybe not at home, maybe all at the away parks. If we get to the seventh inning, it is over for everybody. That's all I'm saying. Kelsey? 
Wait, did I miss something? Josh Hader is the setup guy? No, he's the closer. Okay, he's so we were saying Ryan Presley. Presley is the setup guy, yes. Okay. Second most expensive setup guy. I mean, there are probably other expensive setup guys. I have no thoughts against the Astros, but I do think the Rangers are going to be better than the Mariners and quite possibly get into the playoffs again. The only reason I would say no to that is because of that rotation. Because we'll start. We'll yes, get into but that their lineup rotation. is good enough to make up for it. Uh, that's the reason I don't think it will matter. And the second half of the season, like they're clearly just banking on being able do to. You, do you think that they, they're just going to, I mean, they're going to have to put up six, seven, eight runs because that bullpen ain't doing shit either. That, that bullpen yeah. is scary for the Rangers. That's that's the only reason why I would think that the Mariners have any sort of chance, <clears throat> excuse me, to be second in this division. They won enough games like that. that last season, and they didn't have to. So if they can do it again, th- I mean, that's why I think they can because you know they had one of the best offenses in the league all season long, best run differential by far most of the season, and and that's why I think that they're comfortable trying to get away with it at least for the first half of the season that's fair that's fair i'm just very salty that bruce bochi as an older manager said here rookie evan carter even though i have veterans on the bench i know that you play better and i know that my team has a better chance of winning with you in my lineup so here let's just put you directly in the fucking lineup oh oh um you're you're slotted way far down in the lineup um Let's move you up into a better spot so that you have a chance of, you know, doing some damage. Well, I said this then and I'll say it again. I think the biggest difference between the Rangers and the Astros in the postseason, specifically, I guess, in the way that they were managed is when they were talking to Dusty Baker and Bruce Bochy pregame, I explicitly remember Dusty Baker saying We know what we're doing day in and day out. It's gotten us this far and we are going to go in and play this game exactly the same way that we have, you know, all season long, just like it's any other game. And Bruce Bochy on the complete opposite end of things, not hearing what Dusty Baker had said, said, this isn't like any other game. You know, we, we got to this point to play this game here today and we're going to take it pitch by pitch, inning by inning and react accordingly. And we believe we have the pieces to do that. Like they just had complete different mental approaches from exactly what they said verbatim. And that ended up being the difference in maybe who won the world series. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not salty about it at all. Not at all. (laughs) Not one little bit. So listen, I agree with Susie. I think the Astros should win at least two more games. I understand fan graphs because there are so many questions in the rotation. There are middle inning questions. Um, Rafael Montero has been really bad. I love what Garcia is saying about Bennett Souza. I think he can be very good. I'll be really interested to see how they fill out their bullpen because, yes, those back three guys, electric elite guys, no question, they can't pitch 162. So there needs to be three or four other guys that are doing that too. I, I wonder what version of Luis Garcia we get back. I wonder what version of Lance McCullers we get back. Um, Lance cut all his hair off. I, I, I tell Susie about this movie all the time. I don't know if anybody else, I don't know if you've seen it. Major League number two. When, oh, uh, well, well, in that movie, uh, it's basically along the same lines with the main character, Wild Thing. He cuts all his hair off. He gets, a, you know, he starts wearing suits. He becomes this guy. Lance has, has opened up a, a, a coffee shop. He's done other things. He gets away from baseball. And then he just gets lit up. And he has to get back to that baseball mentality before he, like, regains his superpowers, whatever. But um, the rotation has has a potential to be very scary. I think the lineup is going to be phenomenal. I think you've got Bregman in a contract year who's going to hit. I think you got Tucker who wants to prove that the end of the season wasn't, you know, was just – he was tired. He was tired, got, people. He was yes. tired. You got, you got, uh, 112 RBIs. Okay, I need, to, I need you to, I need you guys to understand 
Tucker was fucking tired. And if I hear anybody slandering Kyle Tucker again, I'm I'm gonna beat y'all with a wet noodle. Like I don't. A L leading RBI leader. Like what are we doing? Stop it. Yeah. yeah. When we talk about Yiner and we gush about Yiner for people that are Astros fans. You need to understand that Yiner Diaz had Atley Rushman numbers in less games. Like way less games. Like if he'd have played the games, his numbers would have dominated Atley Rushman's numbers. And that's con- considered to be one of the best catchers in baseball. He probably wins um, rookie of the year. And sign yes. If 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 Yiner Diaz got actual playing time, and what I will still maintain is what the front office wanted to do was to actually play Yiner Diaz as like the starting catcher. We we would have had a big race between Gunnar Henderson and Yiner Diaz for rookie of the year. That is a bummer. I do believe that. And and with really as like for him. as shell shocked and as quote unquote poor our like farm system is, like we lost draft picks. Like we could have used that extra comp compensatory 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 thank you pick that oh no no we wouldn't have no we wouldn't have because you know why he was not on any rookie lists so we would not have won that but like it still would have been super awesome but anyways so yeah so i i think that uh you know with the with the depth of the lineup when you start looking at what yiner and his team one of the team leaders in ops at home somewhere where they struggle to score runs Susie banging the drum all season long one of the highest ops's at home I, I i think they have potential to put up a ton of runs it's just gonna be can they pitch enough to you know be able to translate that into wins and i mean as astros fans i i feel really confident that they can just for the simple fact that you've got guys that have that are proven. Bregman's proven. He's in a contract here. That adds like 10 RBIs and five home runs for no other reason than he knows it's a contract here. Like his his body language is totally different. He's trying to go get the bag. So when you have a guy like that who's batting behind Jordan Alvarez, I think now the potential lineup yeah. is is Tuve, Jordan, Bregman, Tucker. I mean, I don't have to I don't have to bet I don't have to beat a dead horse it's it's gonna be fun offensively it's just whether the rotation can do it and i'm looking forward to it start start tomorrow that sounds right, like exactly go. what i just said about the rangers though right no no no, no. you're 100 right the one thing i'll say <laughs> Susie's gonna kill me the one thing i'll I say this different I, I didn't talk about the rangers the one thing i'll say this different a lot of those guys had career years a lot of those guys are super young they were way over their skis. It's not like Bregman or Jordan or Tuve that have done this proven year after year after year. If you're going to tell me Leody Tavares is going to hit 300 in the nine hole again, <laughs> I don't buy that. Jung, well, maybe. Well, yeah, <laughs> we'll get to the we'll get to the to the Rangers lineup as well. But but you want to talk about injuries like how we were last season? That's how they're starting off this season. The Rangers, so. They, it, it, it'll be interesting to see what what happens over there. Um, Astros Ryan, comment, do it, uh, love it. Yes, bad luck, like Brian. Uh, in my opinion, our mi- our main middle relievers should involve Souza, Taylor Scott, and Machinsky. I don't know about Machinsky. That's the only one that I'm I'm iffy on, um, Brian. But Souza and Taylor uh, Scott, Taylor Scott has just come on and has wowed me. Like that was that was one of those sneaky names that you're like, who the fuck is Taylor Scott? Uh I don't I don't think he's given up a run yet, has he? Is that the one that hasn't given up a run yet? I think anyways, I think that's the one. Um while we look up that, we'll move on to Astro Wharf Craig, look for a vastly improved Jose Abreu. Absolutely. And do you know why I think he's going to be vastly improved? I think <laughs> I think that Joe Espada will say sir you're you're getting up there in age we, you are better when you are more well rested it was like yuli it was like playoff yuli uh two two seasons ago yeah two seasons ago yuli was so much better when he got rest and we were beating that drum back then play play Trey mancini for the love of god get yuli off of his feet 
Get Jose Abreu off of his feet. Okay, let him DH some of the days. I don't know who the fuck we're going to put over in first. Well, that's a whole other sticking point. But I think (laughs) with some rest, Jose Abreu is going to be so much better. I don't think it's a rest thing with Abreu. I thought really after, after thinking about it, you know, throughout the season, I feel like he put a ton of pressure on himself to come from Chicago, to come to this team that had World Series aspirations, coming from a place that couldn't sniff that. And then tried to be, he tried to be like this guy. He tried to like, he built it up. He put a ton of pressure on himself to perform. Like, hey, I did all this work in Chicago. I need to be this dude for the Astros. And I think he struggled with that. That's why you saw eventually as the season wore on, he got comfortable. And then towards the end of the season, he was a vastly different player. So I think he Mm -hmm. comes in this season without that pressure to perform. Just go in there and be the guy that he was in Chicago. So bad luck. Brian says, I think Taylor Scott has only allowed two runs, one earned uh, this spring so far. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. One name I'd add um, to the bullpen is Seth Martinez. Oh yes, absolutely. And, and Seth Martinez, if you've watched any, any sort of Astros ball over the the past season, you, you recognize Seth Martinez. He's come in and he has been that kind of swing man that Christian Javier was a couple of seasons ago. He's, he's done some spot starts. He's been our long guy. I think he also will will make the bullpen. Um, AL West, I I'm not just saying this because I love the Astros. AL West still runs through Houston. I'm not as confident saying that the American League runs through Houston as I was in past years, but I will confidently say that the AL West runs through Houston. So that's that's what I will say. Um, Mariners with the with your shoes on your head made some moves. And I don't necessarily love all the moves that the Mariners made, but you know, it's the Mariners and it, it rains a lot there. So sometimes I don't know, maybe the mold is like affecting people's brain cells. I don't know, but that starting rotation, I don't want to say that I like it, but I kind of have to, because that starting rotation is fucking gross. Luis Castillo, George Kirby, Logan Gilbert, Brian, Bryce Miller and Brian Wu. Those two end guys are young. Last season was their first season. I think they're going to step up and I think have another repeat season. So we'll see. They signed Mitch Garver from the Rangers as kind of the backup catcher slash DH. We'll see how he kind of transitions over there. They have Mitch Haniger, which they signed. They re-signed Mitch Haniger. Um, Zebby Zavala as well will be the actual backup catcher, I think. Um Ty France, I think, is going to be that, I don't want to say X factor, but I think the team kind of goes as Ty France and Julio Rodriguez go, if that makes any sense at all. Mm -hmm. Like, I think Ty France had a really down year last year, and I don't know, maybe he picks it up, maybe he doesn't. I mean, I hope for my sake that, and the Astros' sake, like, he doesn't, but whatever. Uh, Mariners fans, if you were in the chat, I don't know why you would be in the chat, but if you are, let me know. Uh, how comfortable are you with Josh Rojas as your third baseman? Um, and Dominic Canzone as your left fielder. Are, do, do you feel, do you feel good about that? I don't know if you do or not. Cause I know if that was on my team, I would not feel great. Josh Rojas came over from the D backs. He's got some speed. I, it's, Will he strike out less than A. Eugenio Suarez? Probably. But he's definitely not going to hit you as many homers. All right. I don't know. J.P. Crawford figured it out last season. So he got much better. But can the rest of that lineup do anything? They signed Jorge Blanco from the Twins as your second baseman. I don't know. Well, I don't think that that... If we're picking lineups, strictly on lineups, I would take the Rangers lineup over the Mariners lineup. Oh, yeah. So yeah, if we anything. can marry, like, the Mariners starting rotation with the Rangers uh, lineup, the mm-hmm. position players, that's a gross team. That That's the gross team. Yeah, the Mariners will be oh. one of those teams that, like, when you look at their run differential, they might look like their record should be better, but I, yeah, I don't, I just don't think they have the offense to 
to even be second. Like that's why I think the the Rangers will will be closer to the Astros at the end of 162. So I guess it'll I guess it just depends on if the Mariners can hit enough or if the pitchers can basically just pitch their asses off. Um Paul they traded away Paul Seawald at the end of or at the middle of the season last season. Andrews Andres Munoz is now their closer. They signed Ryan Stanek. That was like a shot to the heart when I read that. I loved Ryan Stanek. I didn't love how many how many people he walked, but I loved Ryan Stanek. And it and it kind of kills me that he's now with the Mariners. Kind of I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I I don't know. That that hurts. It hurts my it hurts my heart. Uh Gabe, Gabe Spire, Trent Thornton, Taylor Saucedo, Tyson Miller, Cody Bolton, Austin Voth. I don't know the rest of those besides Andres Munoz and uh Ryan Stanek. I think Gabe Spire too. So that whole bullpen that is the projected bullpen because Matt Brash is on the IL with elbow inflammation. Surprise! The guy with the dirtiest slider ever has elbow inflammation. Tell me something I don't know. Yeah. That I feel really bad though because Matt Brash is that's it was just dirty. Um Jackson Cower also oh <laughs> Jackson Carr got Tommy John. JK, no Jackson Carr for you. Um, yes, he did. He's one of the ones that came over from the trade uh, with Atlanta this this past season. And then Gregory Santos also has a strained lat. So I I don't know. Again, I think if that, I think the pitching does overcome. I think the pitching is just so much better. So much better, a bit better. I think the pitchers are going to hold it off. It's going to be a lot of like one zero games, very low scoring games for, for the season. Mariners. You're talking about the yeah. pitching is going to hold it off for the Mar- that bullpen yeah. you just read off was awful, right? The, that's the thing, <laughs> like that didn't inspire confidence at all. The rotation, yeah. yes, the bullpen, no. And after you read off the Mariners, I'm with Kelsey 110. It, it, there's no way. They're literally almost the opposite of the Cardinals in my mind of where like the Cardinals have like a very sus starting rotation, but a pretty, you know, could be a pretty solid bullpen and like probably, I mean, should be like top 10 offense, like all season long easily. Uh, The Mariners are exactly the opposite. They have like the starting pitchers that every team is salivating over and get super sus bullpen and mediocre offense on a very good day okay i'll give that to you i'll give so you how that. many I'll wins did it project predict that they would have it was like 89 right or something like that 86 for the mariners 86 for the mariners 86 okay my prediction so be- is that the cardinals and the mariners are going to end with identical records 84 i don't know what it'll be Pro- somewhere between <laughs> yeah like 83 <laughs> and 85 Okay, 84 but, sounds good. But 84, right. was, was that the number that Fangraphs had, or they had 83? 83, yeah. yeah. But the 84 um, win Arizona Diamondbacks, baby. World Series. There you go. Um. So, the, the, okay, so the, the Rangers, the Rangers have uh, 82. Rangers are going to be two games over 500. I just, <laughs> Petty, Petty Susie just really loves the fact that uh, this is like the reigning World Series champion, and like no one gives a fuck about them. <laughs> like no one is saying that they're gonna do shit. No one is scared of them, uh, and that j- it, it makes me laugh. Like the Petty Susie makes me laugh, but it's like the Rangers, so the Petty Susie really comes out. A lot of these guys are on the IL, um, and that makes makes me kind of sad, but not really, because you know. I'm petty. So uh, Nathaniel Lowe and Corey Seager are both on the IL. Nathaniel Lowe has a strained oblique. Corey Seager had that uh, sports hernia. And mm-hmm. Bruce Bochy is being like KG. Not sketchy about like, but he's, he hasn't said if Corey Seager will be on the opening day roster. Um, we shall see what, what happens over there. But 
I mean, you don't want to rush the strain. You don't want to rush that at all. Um, same thing with the strained oblique. So their lineup as it, as it is, has Wyatt Langford breaking with the team. If you don't know who Wyatt Langford is, it sucks that the Rangers have him. Uh, because imagine an even better Evan Carter. Like last season, Evan Carter just tearing the cover off the ball, always getting those extra base hits. Imagine Evan Carter with like more power. And now you have Wyatt Langford. So now that there's like two of them in the fucking lineup and you're all, I don't like that. Um, so they'll have Marcus Simeon at second, Evan Carter as left field, Wyatt Langford as their DH. Adolis Garcia, who may or may not have done eaten something that makes his head grow. Uh, Adolis Garcia and right, Jonah Heim as your catcher, Josh Young as your third baseman, Jared Walsh as your first baseman because Nathaniel Lowe is out. And then Leody Tavares as your center fielder and Ezekiel Duran as your shortstop, um, you know, filling in for Corey Seager. Your bench is Andrew Kisner, Justin Foscu, Josh Smith, and Travis Jankowski. <laughs> so, I mean, enter Corey Seager. Obviously, that lineup is more scary. Jared Walsh. No, that doesn't scare me. Josh Young played out of his fucking mind. Um, Leody Tavares also played out of his fucking mind. Jonah Heim also played out of his fucking mind. So will all of these guys have the same year that they had last year? Or will they regress? That is Duran too. Ezekiel Duran too. He got a but lot Ezekiel of Ezekiel Duran didn't he didn't really play much last year though like kind of late innings right oh i just cleared the things and i didn't want to um let's look that like ryan talking about the bullpen outside of leclerc and spores the rangers don't really have any good bullpen arms you would be correct that's a good point. um and really and truly i don't even know if i would kind of put josh spores up there but you know on a good day so, Jose LeClerc is your closer. Rangers fans, you cannot be happy that Jose LeClerc is your closer. Like, there's just no way. There's no way. David Robertson is your co-closer. I feel like David Robertson needs to be on the Cardinals. <laughs> else. Like, that's that's what that's got enough of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Josh he- Spores, Kirby, Kirby Yates. Kirby Yates was from Graves. Maybe he can recapture. I don't know. Brock Burke, maybe. But Mark Church, Grant Anderson, and uh, my screen turned off. So Danny Duffy, the non-roster invite from the Dodgers. I'm a big Nathan Ivaldi girly. Have we seen the best of Ivaldi? Or... Well, we've not gotten to the starting rotation just yet. I need... Oh, sorry. We hold, but like, do you know who Brock Burke and Mark Church is? No, I don't know who these people are. I, I, you can't. This bullpen is not doing it for me. Not doing it for me, people. Not doing it for me. Okay, so now if you tell me that it's going to be like hockey at like uh, spring break, good night, all star break. And you're just going to do like a full on line change. Yeah. You're going to replace, you're going to replace your, your starting rotation guys. Um, your starting rotation of John Gray and Andrew Heaney and Dane Dunning and Cody Bradford. Like you're just going to move everyone down one or two. You could possibly convince me that that would be okay, but you're not going to get those guys back right then and there like it's not it's not gonna happen and if if they are like the same guy big if it's a big if so your texas rangers consist of nathan Navaldi, which is literally the only starting pitcher that i am afraid of at all he's good john gray andrew heaney dane dunning and cody bradford dane dunning i apologize you are half my brethren I don't, I don't trust you as far as I can throw you. 
So when when Jacob DeGrom and Max Scherzer and Tyler Malley, if all of those can come back on the same timetable, then maybe. But, I mean, Jacob DeGrom got TJ June of last year. So, no. Like, like you're I not hate, I just feel like Jason J- Jacob DeGrom is so freaking irrelevant in my mind because of the fact that he's just he is never gonna be healthy. He is like the fanciest car that you own that needs so much maintenance that you never you can't drive it. It's just not worth it. I'm sorry that I he is so fucking irrelevant to me in baseball. And I I feel bad saying that. I'm sure there's people who will come for me. But it doesn't matter how well you can do anything if you can't do it. And I guess my other hot take is that I do you think Max Scherzer makes 10 starts? I don't. Uh, if Max if Max Scherzer makes five starts, I will be impressed. Mm, like, why? I mean, why? I, I, I know he's got like a shoulder thing, right? But like it's not TJ. No, not, he well, not, he no. had he had surgery on his back for a herniated disc, which <sighs> Again, I'm not an athlete, but I, all of us probably have at least one, if not multiple herniated discs, um, not saying that it wasn't causing him some sort of discomfort, but I don't know from, I don't know. I just think, I think he was done ish in 22, to be honest, I was surprised that the Mets gave him what they did and, and took that chance on him. And I don't know. I just, I'm not the biggest fan of his personality either. So maybe that's clouding my my judgment. But I mean, mean, if he comes back in July, I think he still makes, I think he still makes more than five. I think he has dead arm by August. Like I just think (laughs) (laughs) something else will ail him. Yeah. If it's not his back, it's going to be his elbow or his shoulder or, or something. I mean, I, I just like, I don't want to say Max is 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 washed because he he was like a, an amazing pitcher. I say was like he's dead. He's not dead, but he he's not the R. same. R. He's not the same pitcher, right? Like he's not the same pitcher that yeah. that he that he was. You know, like I just if he wasn't he Max Scherzer, I'm sorry. We've seen people say that starters specifically are washed and should not come back for far less than what we have seen from Max Scherzer last season. And uh, injuries aside, you know, so I just. I don't know. You know I, I think yeah. it's, you know, if you're goaded, of course, you're going to get a different leash length yeah. at the end of your career. But I, I, you know, and, I don't know. I feel weird about the way he's milking it a little bit, I guess. And I, I hope y'all are right. I, I just want to say that. I hope y'all are right. I just feel like the Astro fan in me, it's like, oh, he's going to show up in July. Yeah. He's going to be friggin' nails for two months. And he's going to help them get into the playoffs. And then you're not going to want to see him. And it's like, fucking Max Scherzer. And it's like, I I hope y'all are right. I really do. I mean, the baseball fan in me would actually, you never want to see anybody, especially a legend, you know, a Hall of Famer, go out on anything but a high note. So I guess the baseball fan in me, I don't want to see him crash and burn by any means. But I I just really don't think... If there is that return to any close to form of Max Scherzer of your, it is, it will be like two months, like you said, like that. two months of back to life and burnt out by the postseason. I, well, you know, and then Tyler Malley is, had TJ in May of last year. Again, like it, it's going to take some ramp up to get, to get to where they need to be. And I just don't think. Don't clip I don't, this. I don't think Max this is Scherzer the... gets like Cy Young votes this season. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is oh, real quick. <laughs> Ezekiel Durant had 406 ABs last year, 112 hits, batted 278 with a 767 OPS. And I say that because do you know how many ABs Yiner got? Far less. 355. Far less. <laughs> so he was good. He was very good. Yeah. Um, okay, so who who wins the AL? Who comes out the ALCS champs for 2024? Kels? I do. I'm not just saying this because you know I'm not afraid to say what I think. I do think it's the Astros. 
So, so you think it's a it's a rematch of of twenty two Astros Philly World Series? Yep. Okay. But I think the Phillies win it. Okay. That kind of hurts my heart. But okay. I thought we were talking about the AL West. How did we get all the way to the World Series? Because I well, we circled back. She got my pick hmm. for the AL, and then paired it with my pick for the the NL. I just think the Phillies' time is coming. If it's not this year, it's it's very soon. I hope before it's gonna have to be. Honestly, yes, no. it's gonna it's gonna have to be. Um, I got this feeling. Well, yeah. So. What do you mean? How did we get here? Like we're done talking about the the AL. Well, we're you asked about, about the, the AL. AL. Yeah. <laughs> Angels. Angels fans are punching air right now. I'm so sorry, Angels fans. Golly. Um, There's like two not, teams we're... we didn't even talk about. Like erase them. We don't even care. <laughs> the Angels got Ron Washington. We love that the, for them. Wash is a legend. People love Wash. They. You know what? I actually do kind of like. I do kind of like the uh, the Angel lineup though. Like Lo- Logan O'Hoppy, I was so sad that he got hurt last season and couldn't play like an, an entire actual full season because I do think that he's going to be very good for them. Um, no, uh, no, Shan- Shanwell, Shanwell. I don't know how many syllables is supposed to be in his name. Um, Shanwell, I think it's Shanwell. I think he is going to take a step forward. Like he is a. I can't believe I'm saying this. A less powerful Mauricio Dubon. Like he gets on base like all of the time, but he but he always plays. Um so Mike Trout I don't know what we're doing Mike Trout. Like which Mike, Mike Trout are we going to get if you can stay healthy? I think it is going to be an amazing season again. Does Anthony Rendon play 100 games this season? Based on his comments that he made this offseason, there's no way. Yeah. Do 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 you guys not think that Ron Washington is going to just be like either shape up or ship out? Like I think he will. I, kinda, it, I just don't I know if he if feel. anyone will get to him. I think that yeah, that further that further makes me think maybe he didn't play 50 games. Like, you know, the first time he's got one of those, you know, oh my, whatever hurts, and he's just sitting there. <laughs> He literally sounds like a dude that could care less if he ever plays another game again. That like kind he- of that makes me so sad because like I wish that I had a uh, a pinky full of his athletic ability and that just that hurts my heart. Um Taylor Ward is in left field, Brandon Drury is your DH, Mickey Moniak in right, Logan Hoppy as your catcher like I said and Zach Neto as short. I think the young guys maybe take a step up. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I hope that I hope for Angel fans' sake that that happens because I need something to fill that Shohei Otani sized hole in your heart. Um, does Joe Adele do it for you? Aaron Hicks, maybe? <laughs> no, maybe. Oh, I'm sorry, Angels fans. Um, your oh, your rotation though ought to good day like when you squint could could do something it could do something <laughs> from why very do far away have, why do you have three left-handers though is my question like that's why not griffin canning griffin canning could be kind of good patrick sandoval reed detmers tyler anderson and jace chase silseth i've had i've had two five percent alcohol beers and silseth very hard to say why are there so many left-handers? What are we doing? You couldn't. All right. I, you know, I don't think they thought about it that far, Susie. <laughs> They're like, can you did. pitch? Do you yeah. want to be here? Here's the ball. <laughs> I yeah, I like Reed Demers a lot. I know he has struggled in spring and just never really gotten it together. But he's got the stuff. I, I would love to see him figure it out. I would love all of these guys to figure it out because yeah. in br- in like brief shining moments, mm-hmm. these guys have been really good. Like mm-hmm. Patrick Sandoval for like five innings is yeah. like is like good, and then and then he gives up forty three runs in the sixth, and you're like, God damn it! <laughs> Tyler Anderson, you know, we're really hoping that the Dodgers had like strained him out, and then he got and it just didn't happen. I Carlos Estevez is their closer. Matt Moore 
Jose Soriano, the other Luis Garcia, not our Luis Garcia, my Luis Angel's Garcia, Luis Garcia. <laughs> um, Adam Simber, Jose Cisneros, Hunter Strickland, and Jose Suarez. There are three Jose's in the bullpen. Jose Soriano, Jose Cisneros, and Jose Suarez. That's that's going to mess me up for sure. I'm going to be like, wait, which Jose is pitching? Jose S. You're going to have to be a little bit more specific than that, sir. <laughs> it's like The Bachelor. <laughs> yeah. Kelsey that, that bullpen also does not do anything no. for me. Angels, and that's fans. the thing. Like, even if they do have these two or three starters that do have good years, it it still doesn't make a difference in terms of their win loss total because of the the complete makeup of the team. I, th- it makes me sad. I'm so sorry for Angels fans. Like that just that makes me very sad for you. Um. Do I dare say it? Do you think the A's win more games than the Angels this season? Out of spite. Maybe. I'm not going to say it is is completely unrealistic. I would s- say inst- right off my, my instinct is no, but I wouldn't be like completely shocked. Okay. Okay. Um, shout out to the 103 people that are here in the chat with us. Apparently, they're, that are watching you. You're not chatting, so you're just watching. Apparently, that's fine. A little creepy, but fine. Totally okay. Uh, drop. <laughs> you're say hi. I'm hardly still awake. My cat has been screaming at, at you, Susie, for <laughs> hours. Like, Who is this bitch? I heard. I heard. <laughs> Tell her to um, shut up. <laughs> okay. Why is she listen. keeping you from me? Hey, I tried to I tried to ask who was going to win the American League and just not talk about the last two teams. But Tom, I, I'm sorry, I, I thought we were talking about Tom is an Angels truther, so we are still here. Okay, listen. So hold on, we have to talk about the A's. Okay, we have to talk about the A's. A's. It's the last Oakland A's. A's, right? <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we we're we're I'm rooting for the bees. I'm just saying uh, that's an actual team in the in Oakland. It's just like not in the MLB. So, right. The what are you going to do when they're Las I Vegas A's being a Las Vegas girl? They well, they won't be the Las Vegas A's. I don't think they're going to be able to keep the name. Well, they whatever. Gonna... Las Vegas, whatever. What are you? What are yeah. You gonna do? Yeah. No, that's, that, that's a better question. I don't give a fuck. What if they're a team full of Asians? I would give more of a fuck, <laughs> but way less fucks than about the Astros. So there, there's my there's my fuck fuckometer. Oh, hold on, hold meter, on. Do they, do, do they overtake the snakes at that point? Oh, absolutely not. Ooh, no. okay. Good to know. Good to no. know. No. I mean, depends on what kind of Asian. Never mind. Anyways, <laughs> are the A's, like, this are Korea the A's game is going to start mean... before we wrap this up. <laughs> well, if, if Tom would shut the fuck up, are the A's? I have questions. No Poor Tom. He me. said like a third, not even as many words as both of us can find. <laughs> <laughs> are the A's trying to be the cast off Giants? This is this. I mm. I need answers. Their their rotation consists of Alex Wood, Ross Stripling, J.P. Sears, pa- Paul Blackburn, Joe Boyle. Their their position players, Ryan Noda, Zach Eloff, Brent Rooker, Seth Brown, J.D. Davis, J.J. Bladé, Shea Langoliers, Estuary, Estuary, Ruiz, Ruiz, Nick Allen. How many Giants did I mention in, in those names that I said? More than enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, like more than what I thought was going to happen. Well, think I about think it. I named at least... Three. They're, they may not even right? have to move just going from San Francisco to Oakland. Oh, yeah, definitely not. Like, it makes sense. I had to change my house. D- oh, a lead miss. Why are you? Oh, a lead miss has a sh- strained groin for hmm. Astros fans that remember. Um, side note Abraham Toro was, you know, <laughs> gonna play third. 
And then they signed J.D. Davis and Abraham Toro was relegated to the bench. So I think that the young kids, Shay Langoliers, um, I think Esther Uri Ruiz is going to steal 70 bags. Because he was hurt for, I, I want to say at least six weeks, like not not in in succession, but like kind of in between. And so I think that messed with, with his numbers. I think he's going to steal like 70 bags. He's definitely not going to hit 41 home runs though. But he's going to steal you all the bags. Brent Rooker, Zach Galoff, are you going to hit 43 gajillion home runs? Let's hope. Because I really I really want them to be good. And Shea Langoliers, or as uh, Dallas likes to call him, Shea Bangoliers. I, I want this team to be good. I want this team to be good because I hate their owner. And I love their fans. Yeah. Like, out of spite, absolutely. And this is Miguel? the perfect story for that. Like, do mm -hmm. the Netflix on that. Mm -hmm. Get out of Boston. Get to Oakland. Show me that. Miguel Andujar is on this team, y'all. I told... I, I didn't... I wasn't aware of that fact. I Yankee totally legend. missed that, apparently. Um, this bullpen... D Mason Miller is your closer. Mason Miller throws fire. And they tried to start him as a starter. Mm -mm. <laughs> so I just want you to know that you're going to see fire at the end of this bullpen. Uh, Lucas Urseg, Danny Jimenez, Sean Newcomb, Trevor Gott, Kyle Muller, Michael Kelly, and Mitch Spence. The... The A's may put up runs, but they're I don't think that they're going to prevent any. I think they're just gonna give all of the runs. Just you get a run and you get a run and you get a run. Except for when they play the Astros, in which we will get swept. <laughs> because that is always what happens. A's are your kryptonite. A the A's are our daddies. Like the Yankees try. No, it's the A's always so but it's a lot closer for the a's and the angels than what i had anticipated i'm not gonna lie like i thought that win total was going to be farther mm -hmm. apart so i don't wow. know i thought I, I guess i thought the angels would do something like at least like signing a blake snell which again i don't think it makes a difference in terms of them being competitive for the playoffs or not but they that's kind of already already moreno's thing right i mean that's why they have sure. like a mike trout and a rant you know like he's gonna go out and do something to to make sure those seats stay filled but i guess when you have a mike trout that's, 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 all, that's all he cares about yeah. That, I guess that's oh, true. he absolutely right. only cares about ticket sales 100% and the Angels fandom shows up and and shows out I mean they are I don't think I mean I don't think they're as bruised about the Otani thing in terms of like they're not gonna not be Angels fans this is true this I think true. that 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 fandom runs true and runs deep and Artie Moreno is still gonna make a ton of money on ticket sales and that kind of sucks, but that's why they don't have to be competitive. I don't know to to what extent it, you know it goes until it gets as bad as the A's situation, but it's it's not close right now just because the A's situation is so so bad. Yep. Okay, so now that we've talked about the two teams that I just completely forgot about earlier, uh, who well, now I gotta win? pick again because obviously I think the Angels are gonna win the AL now. Yes, for sure. Well, I mean, like I said, uh, the Oakland Athletics do overcome us. So if they could just back into a spot, it's baseball. Anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Luke Lucas Urseg, Lucas Urseg may may just be it. Lucas Urseg Ur is going to hear this and be like, what the fuck? I never did anything to you, Susie. I'm sorry, Lucas Urseg. Like, I don't mean shots fired at you. I don't even know who you are. You're probably a very nice person. Yes, It's nothing but personal. Okay, not. so I think Astros, um, Phillies, World Series, Tom, okay. Astros, 
Astros Braves, although the ALCS that's Astros Orioles all orange will be phenomenal. Oh, wow. So we're just all all the all the Yankees are just nowhere to be seen. That's for you, Aaron. Sorry. I, I mean, I'm just being honest. You tell me, you tell me how that team's beating the Orioles. I'll, I'll wait. Um, Aaron, does does this mean Yankees get 28 as in like you're Ouch. not getting the World Series until 2028, <laughs> or you're getting your 28th ring? Because I find it way more plausible that the Yankees win a world series in 2028 than you getting a 28th <laughs> ring. Now I'm just, I wanted to clarify to see what you meant. Just saying, uh, Oh, I think it will be, I think it will be Astros Orioles as well. However, I think it's going to be, I think the Yankees and the Orioles are in a bigger dogfight than what people would assume. I think that's going to be closer than I don't want to say it. Damn it. I don't, I don't, don't, I don't want to give Yankee people any shine. Yay. I say Yankee people like they have any meaning on the team. No, I don't want to give the Yankees any love, but I kind of have to. So I think it's going to be Orioles over Yankees Astros over the Orioles. Astros over Astros over Braves. Astros over Braves. You, they don't have Jorge Soler. <laughs> We're in that's the all. That's all that matters, huh? <laughs> Astros Phillies World Series rematch. Strohs in seven. I think the same, Brian. But I think Phillies in seven. Chas McCormick is going to be is going to do some other center field magic trick. Okay, Only because in left he. Field. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Okay. So sad. So sad. But apparently we're gonna get Luis Robert uh Jr. And so like Luis Robert is just gonna be like in center field. So maybe Luis Robert's gonna do some fucking. If Luis Robert Jr. Magic. is in center field for the Astros, I don't care who the other team is, you can put all the other teams over there and it's Astros in four. Okay, but like really and truly though, for a while. Chas McCormick's numbers and Luis Roberts' numbers are much more similar than like people think. I just then, I need you guys to know this. Tell the front of office think. that. <laughs> okay. Listen. I hope you're I, right. I, I got fine. Chas McCormick on my fantasy team. So Good. great yes. pick. Your lips to the baseball also, God's ears. I when he plays, he's really good. On my fantasy team. And literally everyone in my league was like, Why the fuck did you pick mm -hmm. Chas McCormick? I'm like, y'all just fucking watch. I'm like, because I know ball. That's why, motherfuckers. <laughs> Known ball knowers. Mm -hmm. Right here. And that, sh that should be a shirt. Okay, so we have to do head. this again after game 82. Or like right around game 82. Okay. Yeah. What we know now. Do. Yeah. Let's do it. So, um, guys, we appreciate you hanging out with us for three hours and 22 minutes. Golly. Uh, 103 of you. And the number like literally steadily climbed. Shout out you guys because I have I've never seen three numbers in the little eyeball thing ever. So uh, we, we appreciate you guys. <laughs> there we go. That's why. It. That's why it was it was Kelsey and Tom. Um, thanks guys for hanging out with us. We really appreciate you. Uh, po on the podcast side, don't worry. You do not have to sit through three hours, almost three and a half hours of this. I will actually cut things up and make them more digestible. Um, if you have not already subscribed please subscribe to the YouTubes before I do this though. Tell the people where they can find you Kelsey and then Tom go. I am at K bird tweets. That's K B U R D tweets on Twitter, Twitter forever. You find me there. You find the link tree. You find me everywhere, but yeah, I'll be here with Susie every week. Tom at third coast, Tom on Twitter, not X. I don't know who calls it X. You're wrong. If you do no it, one. Exactly. <laughs> uh, on Instagram at TC Tom one and on the PSF app, it is the absolute best place to watch a game. If you're not going to the game, you're hanging out with people like Susie and myself talking ball throughout the entire game from the comfort of your home, your garage, the gym, wherever the hell you want to be and watching the game with us. We'll be yelling at the TV with you instead of by yourself. 
come join us on the PSF app. Love that. This is true. This is true. Uh, you can hear me say things like, I can't wait until they rub the balls up. Like it's a, it's a thing that that's going to happen. There's probably going to be drinking games too uh, during the PSF app games. We shall see. There's an actual drinking game, not just the drink if you agree or disagree part. Uh, again, if you guys have not already subscribed to the YouTube, please subscribe to the YouTube. We really appreciate all 216 of you, I think. Um, if you have not left a rating or a review on Apple or Spotify, what the fuck are you doing? Please give a five-star review, okay? Leave a nice rating. All, literally, all you have to say is noseball, period, is hysterical. Period. That's all you have to say in four words. Okay. In the, in the review, that's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, we really appreciate you guys again, hanging out with us. If you liked us at all, please share. That's, that's what we do, what we do. Right. Uh, and I think that's it. I think that's it. And I'm going to hit and stream. Yay. Baseball. Hooray. And stream.